The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens a program with the title tune from the picture Something to Sing About. <laughs> Back in the year 1904, Mr. H.W. Kircher of Kankakee, Illinois, happened to be visiting in Buffalo. He attended a pure food show and discovered a new product he had never heard of before. It was called Jell-O. He took a package home and gave it to his best girl who made a dessert out of it. That was 33 years ago. And listen to what Mr. Kircher says today. Later, after we were married, we always served Jell-O, and we're still serving it. I just want you to know about one of your customers. I don't know how many packages I've purchased, but there have been thousands in my home anyway. Well, we call that real loyalty, and Jell-O must be good to hold its friends for over 30 years. Jell-O was a great treat 30 years ago, but it's an even greater treat now, for the only changes that have been made in Jell-O are those that have made it even better. Today, Jell-O brings you a new, delicious, extra-rich fruit flavor, a full-bodied, real fruit goodness that's supremely satisfying. Order Jell-O from your grocer tomorrow. Look for those big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. <laughs> that was something to sing about, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you that favorite of men, women, and children, especially men and children, Jack Benny. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And, Don, that was an awfully nice introduction, up to the word especially. You know, I don't do so bad with the ladies either. Oh, I didn't mean that, Jack. I just feel that you're not as romantic as some of the other male stars in Hollywood, and I thought I'd point it out. Well, it's not nice to point. <laughs> but let's forget that, Don. I've got something to tell you that's much more important, a real surprise. Oh, yes? What is it? Well, for a long time, I've been intending to make a certain move. Been a, on my mind for weeks, and yesterday I did it. I'm like a kid with a new toy. Why? What did you do? Well, I finally traded in my car. You know, my car. You know, the one I've been driving around all the time. The Stanley Steamer? <laughs> yep, yep, the old Stanley. Yep. <laughs> well, it's about time you got rid of it. Now, wait a minute, Don. I know I've had it for a long while, but that car was in very good condition. I've never had one bit of trouble with it. Well, then why did you trade it in? Well, I'll tell you, Don. I thought it was a little bit too old-fashioned for a young fella like me. <laughs> you know how it is, why the girls won't even look at you nowadays unless you put on a flash. So I traded it in. Well, that's fine, Jack. What did you get? A Maxwell. <laughs> oh, it's a honey. A Maxwell? <laughs> Why, they haven't made those in ten years. Oh, it isn't new, Don. It's been used, but it's in... Really, it's... <laughs> It's in swell shape. Wait till you see it. Oh, I'd like to. What color is it? Well, it's a sort of a plaid. It's, uh... <laughs> it's been painted several times, you know. <laughs> it's a coupe, you know. Oh, a coupe. Is it convertible? What's that, Don? Is it convertible? Oh, sure. I can get my money back on it anytime. <laughs> oh, yes. Sir. No, no, Jack. Is it convertible? Does the top go up and down? Oh, all the time, Don. <laughs> oh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got a lot of pep, believe me. Hey, Jack, what's this I hear about your new car? Oh, yes, Phil, I got it right downstairs. You ought to see it. Huh? So you finally got rid of that old tub, huh? Yeah. What did you get? A Maxwell. A Maxwell? What is it, a foreign car? <laughs> no, Phil, it's a Maxwell. It was made right here in this country. Well, gee, they ought to advertise. <laughs> Well, to tell you the truth, Phil, they haven't made them for quite a while, but the one I've got is pretty modern. It's right up there with the best of them, you know. Have you got a radio in it? No, but there's a Victrola on the steering wheel. <laughs> of course, it only plays when I'm turning corners. Oh. <laughs> Jack, I can't understand a guy like you buying a secondhand car. Why didn't you get one of the new ones, a 1938 model? Oh, before you get delivery on them, you get tired waiting, you know. But with a second-hand car, it's different. There's no delay. 
You walk on the lot, pick the one you want, they tow it out, and there you are. <laughs> well, all I can say is a car as old as that can't be very easy riding. Oh, no? Well, ask Mary. She was out in it. Hey, Mary. Yeah? Come here a minute. You were out in my car, weren't you? Uh-huh. Oh, you ought to see it, fellas. Jack and I drove all the way to Santa Barbara and back. Yes, sir. Boy, am I stiff. <laughs> yeah, stiff. That car runs plenty smooth, and you know it. Then why did you strap me in the seat? <laughs> because I never knew what minute we were going to take off. <laughs> anyway, when a fella asks you for a ride, you don't have to be so critical. I'm not critical, but gee, after a ride like that... Yeah. Were you badly shaken up, Mary? I'll say. Now I know what a malted milk goes through. <laughs> oh, it wasn't as bad as that, Mary. You know, we went clear to Santa Barbara and back without a bit of trouble. Oh, yeah? What about that door that fell off? Well, that was your fault. You leaned on it. <laughs> and anyway, any car that can make a 90-mile trip without stopping for gas or oil must be okay. How long did it take you, Jack? Well... We uh... started Tuesday. Quiet. <laughs> Took us about five hours, Don, but we were bucking the wind. <laughs> anyway, it was a very pleasant drive, whether Mary liked it or not. I did like it, oh. and I've got black and blue marks to prove it. <laughs> well, you guys can laugh, but I'm satisfied with my little Maxie. <laughs> Hiya, fellows. Hello. Hello, Hello Kenny. Hello. <laughs> oh, boy. You want to see what I saw downstairs? <laughs> What? Huh? A car. Gee, you ought to see the crowd standing around it. <laughs> the crowd? Are they admiring the car, Kenny? No, they're waiting to see the guy that would ride in it. <laughs> oh, they are. Well, Kenny, for your information, that car belongs to me. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, it does. If you don't happen to like it, you don't have to make any smart crack. Oh, excuse me, Jack. I, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I think your car is swell. Well. <laughs> <laughs> now, look here, Kenny. Control yourself. <laughs> You're here to sing and nothing else, so go ahead and do it. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. See who that is, Mary. Telegram for Jack Benny. Take it, Mary. Uh, what are you going to sing tonight, Kenny? I'm going to sing that old feeling. Oh, look, Jack. This wire's from a vaudeville agent in New York. Well, what does it say? Uh, Jack Benny Hollywood. Can offer your car three weeks at Paramount Theater. <laughs> Ah, you see, I knew that was a good investment. I know what I'm doing. Think, Kenny, Mary, wire him that I go with the car, will you? I saw you last night and got that old When you came inside, I got that old feeling. The moment that you danced by, I felt a thrill. And when you caught my eye, my heart stood still. Once again, I seem to feel that old And I knew the spark of love was still burning. There'll be no new romance for me. It's foolish to start for that old healing. I started out happily Last night my heart was so gay Then suddenly something had happened to me And I found my heart beating all so fast I saw you there and got that Moment that you danced by, I felt.
felt a thrill And when you caught my eye Love was still burning There'll be no new romance for me It's foolish to start For that old feeling That old Feeling from Vogue's of 1938, sung by Kenny Baker in his usual fine style. Kenny, your stock just went up three points. Thanks, Jack. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we are going to present something of a more legitimate nature. <laughs> something... <laughs> mo- <laughs> Kenny, I warned you. Oh, boy, what a car. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Kenny. I've stood for just about enough. And that goes for everybody in this company. I don't want to hear another word about my car, and that's final. Now let's change the subject. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jell-O is not only inexpensive and easy to make, but it tastes twice as good as ever before. It comes in six delicious flavors, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Thank you, Don. Oh, that's all right, Jack. Yes. Hmm. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as I said before, tonight, we are going to present something of a more legitimate nature, something very unhokey. We are offering... We are offering our version of 20th Century's Fox's recent film success, Wife, Doctor, and Nurse. Please, Mr. Zanuck. (laughs) Now, as you may remember, this picture... This picture starred Loretta Young, Warner Baxter, and Virginia Bruce. I will play Warner Baxter's part, the doctor. And I'll be the nurse. That's right, Mary. And I invited Loretta Young to play the part of my wife. What did she say, Jack? Oh, who needs her? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I don't know, Jack. You'd like to have Loretta Young play that part. Now, wait a minute, Phil. Don't be too sure. There are a lot of girls who are much more beautiful than Loretta Young. Aw, Jack. (laughs) (laughs) No, I don't mean you. Well, name one. Go ahead. Name one. Well, the scene of our little play (laughs) is the office and clinic of Dr. Benny, the famous physician and surgeon. You know, folks, I can hardly wait till I play this part. It's right up my alley. Oh, Kenny. Yes, Jack? uh, Run out and get me a mustache. I want to look like Warner Baxter. Okay. Get him a face, too. (laughs) Don't worry. I'll look all right. (laughs) Hurry with that mustache, Kenny. I can't do a thing without it. Well, Jack, if the part in our play tonight is so important, why didn't you grow a real one? I did, Don. I did grow a mustache, but... It looked like an eyebrow, and I kept winking my mouth. <laughs> oh, it was awful, huh? Well, that must have been a doy. Well, I didn't mind that, but when the doctor told me my teeth needed glasses, I thought that was too much. <laughs> anyway, this play will go on immediately after the next number. Oh, Phil, uh, uh, play something apropos, will you? You know, something that will put us in a medical mood. Oh, we'll jangle your nerves, all right. Well, you probably will, yeah. <laughs> Gee, Phil, the way you run down your orchestra, goodness, isn't there... Is there one good man in your band? Yes, the guitar player is swell. <laughs> the guitar player? Well, gee, he isn't so important. He is, too. He marcells my hair. <laughs> <laughs> you do? <laughs> well, I must make an appointment with him. My hair needs a wave, doesn't it, Mary? Yeah, but you better do it quick. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I got all the hair I need. You have? Then what's that shiny spot in the back? That's where he parks his car. Oh. (laughs) It is not. That's where I used to worry. And, Mary, I told you to lay off my car. It's my property. I bought it. And I'm the one that has to make the payments. Payments? I thought it came in a box of Cracker Jack. (laughs) Well, I suppose that doesn't cost money. (laughs) 
<laughs> anyway, we're wasting a lot of time. Let's get in the mood for our sketch. Play something, Phil, while I get into my stethoscope. Mary, have you seen my white jacket any place? by Phil Harris and his MDs, Musical Demons. And now for our play, Wife, Doctor, and Nurse. The opening scene... Hey, is... Jack. Yes, Kenny. Here's the mustache you sent me for. Isn't it nice? Let's see it. Oh, a pretty green one. <laughs> Kenny, you're the only person in the world that would ever think of buying a green mustache. Ain't it the truth? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly is. Imagine putting a green mustache under my nose. If I was your upper lip, I'd walk out. <laughs> It'll have to do. And now for our play, folks. Wife, doctor, and nurse. The opening scene is the office of Dr. Benny, where we find his staff, his nurse, and some assorted patients. Curtain. Music. Hello, Dr. Benny's office. Sorry, the doctor's out doing research work. He's down at Minsky studying anatomy. Goodbye. Minsky's. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Benny's office. What's that? Your husband swallowed a collar button? Well, that's not so serious. Oh, it was in a shirt. <laughs> well, I'll tell the doctor. Goodbye. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, Miss Livingston. Is the patient in 503 showing any improvement? Oh, he's much better. This morning, he chased me all around the room. Well, he always does that, doesn't he? Yeah, but today he caught me. <laughs> well, we'll have to discharge him. Say, doctor, are we operating on Mr. Wilson today? Yes, doctor, yes. But first, we must take another X-ray. Uh, what does this chart read, Miss Livingston? Uh, here it is. He has a marked febrile reaction and a high leukostosis. Mm -hmm. But the polynuclear cells and the lymphocytes show no toxic changes. Oh, that's terrible. Terrible. No, doctor, that's good. Oh, is it? <laughs> well, that's fine. Hmm, only two guesses and I got the wrong one. <laughs> uh, what about Mrs. Smith in 218? Well, doctor, her scoliosis is impaired, but her opsonic index is below par. Hmm. What do you think of that? Nothing. You're not going to catch me again. <laughs> I'll be in my office for the next hour. Call me when we're ready for uh, Mr. Wilson. I'll do that, doctor. Oh, Dr. Benny. Yes, Dr. Baker. I wish you'd give me something. I got an awful stomach ache. Well, you're a doctor. Why don't you treat yourself? Not me. I charge too much. <laughs> Well, dick her a little. You'll come down. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll be in my office, Miss Livingston. <laughs> Miss Livingston. Miss Livingston, what's the meaning of this? What? Who put pants on that skeleton? I did. Doesn't he look cute? <laughs> 
<laughs> Cute. Whoever heard of a skeleton with pans? I saw it in Esquire. <laughs> well, take them off. Yes, sir. Oh, doctor, I forgot to tell you, your wife is in the reception room. My wife? Show her right in. I can't. That's the part Loretta Young was supposed to play. Well, get somebody else to play it. We've got to go on. Get anybody. Oh, all right. Hmm, it's a fine how do you do. Uh, this way, Mrs. Benny. Oh, hello, dear. Hello, darling. <laughs> Fine substitute. I'm so glad you dropped in, dear. Have you been shopping? Yes, I bought the cutest pink rompers for Junior with little blue pockets. <laughs> oh, for Junior. I can hardly wait till he puts them on. If I'm Junior, I'll scream. Get out of here. Well, darling, run along. I'm very busy. I'll be home early. Oh, you say that every night, and I keep waiting and waiting. <laughs> But this time, I mean it. What are we having for dinner, honey? Oh, chicken pot pie, and I made it with my own little hand. Oh, goody, I'll bet it's lousy. <laughs> now, run along, dear. I'm very busy. But first, I gotta have some money. I want to buy some lingerie. Lingerie? <laughs> well, all right, underwear. <laughs> all right, here's $25. Now, go. Oh, wait a minute. Why don't you introduce me to your friend? What friend? That's a skeleton. Skeleton? Yeah. Well, it was his own fault for coming to you. <laughs> now, scram, dear. Get out of here. I got lots of work to do. <laughs> All righty. Goodbye. It's a fine mix-up. I'm so mad I could operate on somebody. <laughs> yes? Oh, doctor, we're all ready for Mr. Wilson. Fine. Get Dr. Baker and Dr. Harris immediately. First, we must have another x-ray to confirm the diagnosis. Prepare everything. Yes, doctor. Well, here we are. Everything set? Yes, doctor. We're all ready, doctor. Well, Mr. Wilson, are you nervous? Uh, no, no, doctor. Not a bit. Well, I am. <laughs> Have you had any new symptoms? Uh, no, doctor. I still keep saying strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. <laughs> and you still see those big red letters on the box? Oh, all the time. All the time. <laughs> it's more serious than I thought. Well, we'll have to take another x-ray. Stand over there a little so you're in focus. Is this all right? Fine. Now, ready for the picture? Turn on the machine. Quiet, everybody! Quiet! Quiet! Quiet on the set! Camera! We're turning! Action! <laughs> Dr. Baker, notice how high the right diagram, uh, diaphragm is, and the epiglottis. <laughs> 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 All right, so I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Dr. Baker, you notice how high the right diaphragm is, and the epiglottis seems to be a little swollen. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, sir. Look, Doc, he seems to have hepatic hypertrophy. What's that? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> yes. Oh, Doc, look, he's got coins in his pocket. Don't grab, I saw him first. <laughs> Wait, look at that abnormal shadow on the left side. We must remove it at once. That's his heart. Oh, then that wouldn't be cricket. <laughs> ah, but you notice he has that same epi... That same ep That same condition. Right. Rush into the surgery. What's the matter with me, doctor? Absolutely. We must operate at once. Oh, doctor, doctor, we're all out of ether. Out of ether? What do we do? Squeeze Kenny. That's it. Let's hurry. Last one in the operating room is a rot. Well, doctor, how's Mr. Wilson getting along? Fine, fine. Was the operation a success? It certainly was. Liberty Magazine gave it four stars. <laughs> Darn it. What are you mad about? That's two more than they gave my picture. <laughs> well, I must dash home now. See you in the morning, Miss Livingston. Good night. Oh, wait a minute, Doctor. Before you go, there's a patient been waiting all day to see you. Very well. Send him in. Uh, step right in the office, sir. Thank you, my little light pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Doctor. Hello, Schleppo. My, Hello. my, my, you got a fancy office with snappy furniture. <laughs> Ah, I'll bet you're charging 20. No, no, no. My fees are reasonable. $5 for an office visit and $15 if I come to your house. If you catch me home, I deserve it. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Schlepp, uh, what seems to be the trouble with you? 
I don't know, Ducky. One minute I'm hot, the next minute I'm cold, and then I'm wringing wet. Well, those are alarming symptoms. When did you first notice them? This morning, when I took a shower. <laughs> Well, that's simple. Just give up bathing. You're perfectly all right. No, no, Doc. I don't feel so good. I think you should give me some medicine. But you don't need medicine. You're perfectly normal. But I feel sick in the vitabrake. <laughs> but you're not sick, Slap. You're the picture of health. I'm dying, and he's talking pictures. <laughs> now, Slap, believe me, there's nothing wrong with you. Uh, why don't you be more of a salesman? But look, Slap, I can't do it. I got prestige. I've got ethics. Who cares what you got? I'm the patient. But I don't want to take your money if there's nothing the matter with you. Nothing the matter with me, you fucking. I got headaches, I got chills, I got pains in my back, I got rheumatism on my arms, and not only that, my feet hurt. Oh, come, come, Slap. Why, that's impossible. Impossible? Why? Because you can't have everything. Be satisfied with the little we have. I must have everything The way I suffer and the troubles that I have Live, slap, your cares will be forgotten But I feel rotten Just bring me down a Dixie, say hello to Trixie Poor man, rich man, beggar or king You can't have everything And thus, ladies and gentlemen, ends another one of our highly dramatic offers Wife, doctor, and nurse Did you like it? Mm hmm? Everybody likes the excitement of a thrilling new dessert. And that's what I'm going to tell you about right now. You'll find swell new recipes on every package of Jell-O. A tempting variety of suggestions for all kinds of desserts and salads that will give you many new ideas for planning your winter meals. Here's one delicious dessert called Macaroon Velvet. Made with rich cherry red Jell-O, crushed macaroons, and toasted almonds. It's a grand company dish, but it's inexpensive. Here's another. Fruit Symphony, made with shimmering green lime jello combined with grapefruit, orange, and canned pineapple. A year-round fruit dessert that's lovely to look at and even better to eat. There are lots of other recipe hints on the different jello packages. They're all appetizing and easy, but you must be sure to get genuine jello. For you'll find these recipes only on the jello boxes, and only jello brings you that delicious, extra rich fruit flavor. All six flavors of Jell-O are crammed with luscious, real fruit goodness. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. So get the best. Insist on the one and only Genuine Jell-O. the last number of the fourth program in the new Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. I hope you all liked our little play, and that you will all... Answer the phone, Mary. Hello? Yes? Oh, Jack, it's Loretta Young. Well, tell her it's too late. Not for what she has to say. Good night, folks. This is the National Broadcasting Company. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with The Sun Will Be Up in the Morning. <laughs>
Today, ladies and gentlemen, the word Jell-O means more than it ever did before. Today, it not only stands for Jell-O, America's favorite gelatin dessert, it also means Jell-O puddings, those three swell, ready-prepared puddings that have now been added to the popular Jell-O family. Both Jell-O and Jell-O puddings are unsurpassed for rich, tempting flavor. Both are easy and inexpensive to serve and delightfully good. And both bear that famous name, Jell-O, a name that stands for tops in quality, a name that spells extra enjoyment and complete satisfaction. As you know, Jell-O is a trademark, the property of General Foods. So be sure to mention it whenever you ask the grocer for Jell-O puddings or any of Jell-O's six delicious flavors, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, or lime. And by the way, if you haven't enjoyed strawberry or raspberry Jell-O recently, do so real soon, because now they taste better than ever. Each has a new, improved flavor obtained by using a natural flavor base artificially enhanced. And that's what gives those two popular flavors that rich, distinctive Jell-O goodness, the goodness that made Jell-O America's favorite gelatin dessert. The Sun Will Be Up in the Morning, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this being the hottest week of the year in Southern California, we bring you a man who can hardly stand it in his long underwear, Jack Benny. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hmm, it itches. Uh, Jello, Jello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And, uh, Don, let me tell you about my underwear. I don't care what the thermometer says. I'm strictly a calendar man. When the swallows return to Capistrano, my longies come back to me. <laughs> but you're right, Don. It has been a terribly hot week. Why, in the valley where I live, it was sweltering. Well, everybody's been complaining about the heat in Beverly Hills, too. Although, when I woke up yesterday morning, there was a little red man with a tail and a pitchfork sitting at the foot of my bed... And he said, uh, this is nothing, buddy. <laughs> I didn't like him calling me buddy. Uh. <laughs> anyway, this has really been torrid weather. Well, Jack, the only thing to do when it's like this is just sit back and take it easy. Take it easy? Why, Don, this is the busiest week I've ever had. And you know what my schedule was today, don't you? No, what? Well, at 4 o'clock, I did our first Jell-O broadcast, and I had to rush over and do the Screen Guild program then home to dinner, then back here to do this repeat Jell-O show, and immediately afterwards, I've got to do the second program for the Guild. My goodness. And at 11 o'clock, I've got to emcee the opening of that new chili bowl in Tarzana. <laughs> I tell you, Don, if it wasn't for vitamin B1 and the cigarettes Phil's drummer gives me, I doubt that I'd be able to carry on. <laughs> well, really, I... No, really, really, Don, if it... I'm not kidding, that, that vitamin B1 sure helps. <laughs> vitamin B1, well, do those pills really help you, Jack? Oh, they're marvelous, and how they pep you up. Why, Don, you remember how I used to walk in my sleep night after night? I sure do. Well, now I run like a deer. <laughs> and, Don, I owe it all to vitamin B. Oh, Jack, you and your pills. Oh, hello, Mary. Pills to go to sleep, pills to wake up, vitamin B, vitamin D, throat gargle, cough syrup. All right. Your bathroom looks like a sale at Sontag. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mary. All the stuff I've got in my medicine chest, I have good use for. Oh, sure. Why, Don, he's got everything from corn plasters to toothache drops. Well, what's wrong with that? Your teeth will never ache again, brother. <laughs> now, listen, Mary, there's no use being silly and you can stop with those gags. Because I haven't got false teeth. Then why is it you never let people slap you on the back? <laughs> because I'm tender, that's why. To hear you talk, you'd think I w Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Boy, have I got a pip for you. I'll bet. Get a load of this one. I made it up myself. What's the... Uh... This will kill you, Jackson. <laughs> All right, get to it. What's a twack? A twack? I don't know, Phil. What's a twack? It's something a twain one's on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hotter than the weather tonight, folks. 
Uh, it's too hot for that kind of stuff, if that's what you mean. <laughs> Say, Jackson, wasn't that a scorcher this week, though? Sure was. Why, in Beverly Hills, it was just like an oven. Well, you live close to Santa Monica. Why didn't you go down to the beach? Oh, I was too busy. Yeah, Jack had to stay home and take care of his lemonade stand. <laughs> It's not my lemonade stand. A couple of children came to the door and asked if they could sell lemonade on my front lawn. What do you expect me to do, turn those little kids down? No, but you didn't have to make them sign a 99-year lease. <laughs> oh, quiet. Now, Mary, I've got a very tough schedule today with all my broadcasts, so don't annoy me. Oh, that's right, Jackson. I read where you're doing the Screen Guild show today, too. Kind of a tough grind, ain't it? You said it. If it wasn't for vitamin B1... Don't boy. listen to him, Phil. He's got a pill for everything and all kinds of medicine. All right. Jack thinks there's always something the matter with him. Oh, a hypodermiac, eh? Hey? <laughs> hypodermiac? <laughs> That's hypochondriac, and I'm nothing of the kind. I just believe in taking precautions. Well, I go to a doctor twice a month for a checkup, whether I feel bad or not. Well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard of. Oh, yeah? Now, take me. I've never been to a doctor in my life. Well, don't go, brother. You've got a shock coming. <laughs> no kidding, Phil. No, Phil, really, did you ever take a good look at yourself in a mirror? Yes, and I'm gorgeous. <laughs> Well, I should have had my head examined for asking that one. Hey, Jack. What? Here comes anemic on the outside. <laughs> oh, yes. Hello, Dennis. How do you feel? I'm fine, thank you. Say, Mr. Benny. Yeah. <laughs> have you heard this one that's going around? What's a twack? <laughs> oh, you too, eh? All right, Dennis. What's a twack? Mr. Harris won't tell me. Must be risque. <laughs> Well, he told me that bright answer, so for your information, Dennis, a twack is something a train runs on. That's Twain! Twain! <laughs> you root my gag. <laughs> All right, Phil, I rooted. I'm sorry. <laughs> Say, Dennis, I meant to, uh... Dennis, I meant to ask you, you didn't forget to go down and register last Wednesday, did you? No, I was there, but I don't get it, Mr. Benny. What's it for? What's it for? Dennis, you signed up for conscription in a national emergency. If you're drafted, you get a year's training, your room and board, and $21 a month. $21 a month? Yes, sir. I'll take it up with my manager. Your manager has nothing to do with this. Say, Phil, you registered, didn't you? Yeah, and so did all the boys in my band. That's swell. That is, uh, everybody but my guitar player. Oh, why, is he, is he over 35? No, he made up that joke about the twack. <laughs> well, uh, they won't take him because that automatically makes him a moron. <laughs> Say, um, uh, Dennis. Yes, please? Hmm. We're about ready for a song. Have you got something nice prepared for us? Yeah, I'm gonna sing Twade Wins. <laughs> That's trade wind. Stay away from Harris. Sing, kid. Phil, why don't you buy a new joke book? Her head. 
Under an awning of silvery fall, we traded all the nights that I sailed away. Oh, trade winds, what of all that love has made? Oh, trade winds, are they Trade Wind, sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, that was terrific. Thank you. Your voice positively thrilled me. All right, Don. Don. Oh, Jack, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> Don. Don, Dennis's voice positively thrilled me. Okay. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the next time you won to your neighborhood Woser. Be sure to ask him for a package of tempting and appetizing Jell-O. Jell-O, that's right. It is not only economical and easy to make, but comes in six delicious flavors. Swing it, kid. So always look for the big wet letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. J-E-W-A-W-A-O. There. Darn you, Jack Benny. Now, now, Don, that was a real cute idea of mine. And I'll tell you one thing. Anytime you get a novelty and you don't take advantage of it... Answer the phone, Mary. Okay. And you don't take advantage of it. You're silly. Hello? Yes? Yes, Mr. Sanders. He's right here. For you, Jack. Mark Sanders of Paramount. Oh, my director. Having a little more trouble with him. Hello? Yes, Mr. Sandridge. Well, now, look. We've been all through that before, and I don't want to be stubborn, but my name has got to be first on the screen. I don't care what that worm said. He's in New York, and I'm here. Take care of the local boy. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Sanders, that's my ultimatum. So think it over. Goodbye. What's the matter, Jack? Oh, it's that picture I just finished with Fred Allen. Allen wants his name first. Quite a ham, huh? Quite a ham? Don, you don't know what that guy Allen went through to try and be better than I am in the picture. Why, he studied his lines all night long. He hired four or five extra writers. He took dramatic lessons. Why, he even bribed the cameraman to try and make him look better than me on the screen. And for what? <laughs> A lot of good it did him. Yeah, if he thinks he's going to steal that picture from Rochester, he's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to steal it from anybody. You know what burns me up? I give the best years of my life to Paramount. Incidentally, Jack, I do the Maxwell House program with Mary Martin, your leading lady in the picture, and she had a lot of nice things to say about you. Oh. Well, Mary is an awfully sweet girl, and she's swell to work with. Thanks. I don't mean you. <laughs> I'm talking about Mary Martin. You know, she's from Weatherford, Texas. Are you acquainted with Miss Martin, Phil? Jackson, there ain't a gal in, from, or passing through that state. I don't know. <laughs> The only one you know is Galveston Gertie. <laughs> Always bragging, yeah? Say, Mr. Benny, what? I've never been in Texas. Are the girls really so beautiful down there? Yes, they are, Dennis, and there are thousands of them, each one prettier than the other. Then why do cowboys always sing such lonesome songs? <laughs> They're trying to fool us, Dennis. They, they don't want any competition. But getting back to Mary Martin, I really made an impression on that girl. Why, do you know in the picture she sings a chorus 
of my heart belongs to Daddy, and she sings it right to me. See, I love that part where she looks at me and goes, Dad, 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 Dad. She hates to say it, huh? <laughs> Go on, she loves it. <laughs> well, anyway, you'll see it on the screen. Say, Phil, I don't want to give any away any more of the plot, so how about ripping through a band number in your own inimitable, thank heaven, style? <laughs> okay, Jackson, we're going to play a... Who cares? Play, play. Wait a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I listened to your program last Sunday, and I resent all the slurs cast upon my name. Slurs? Who are you? Sure, I'll J. Banal. Goodbye. <laughs> I bet I know what that J stands for. Play, Phil. <laughs> The World is in My Arms, played by Phil Harris and his Gypsy Orchestra. Gypsy meaning, if he calls that an orchestra, it's a gypsy. See? <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's almost as bad as the twain on the twack, isn't it, Phil? Bad nothing. That's a Lulu. <laughs> oh, fine. How much you want for that gag, Jackson? Oh, Phil, I couldn't sell it. I could. I said sell. <laughs> You can have the gag for nothing, Phil. Say, Don, as I told you before, I've got to rush over and do that Screen Guild broadcast, so maybe i better run along now and get everything set. Are you directing it? No, Ernst Lubitsch will be there, but I'm doing a dramatic play with Claudette Colbert, uh, Basil Rathbone, and Edward Arnold. You're in pretty fast company, ain't you, Joe? <laughs> Tune in, Mo, and you'll find out. <laughs> Well, I'm going to run along, Don. Uh, Rochester's waiting downstairs for me in the Maxwell. The Maxwell? I thought you traded that car in last week. Well, I intended to, Phil, but I decided to wait. <laughs> Tell him what really happened. Never mind. What was it, Barry? Well... Look, I'm very busy. If you think I'm going to hang around and hear you run down my car again, you're crazy. Goodbye. So long, Jack. Gee, that guy's burned up. What happened, Mary? Well, it was this way. I was over to Jack's house last Monday, and I finally persuaded him to trade in the Maxwell. Uh-huh. Well, anyway, after a long argument, we got in the car and started toward Hollywood. And all the way over, Jack was saying to his mom... Rochester, take it easy. Okay, boss. You know, I hate to trade this car in, Mary. Now, don't back out. Say, Jack, what kind of allowance do you think they'll give you on the Maxwell? Well, if I can get $700... <laughs> no, really, I'll be happy. $700? Yes, this car's got a lot of extras on it. Seat covers, radio, cigarette lighter. Don't forget the anchor. We ain't got no brakes. <laughs> the brakes are all right. Boy, what a rattle trap. It's not a rattle trap. Miss Livingston's right, boss. This car vibrates so much I can't keep my socks up. <laughs> Your socks. All right, our socks. <laughs> That's more like it, and stay out of them. 
Say, Jack. What? Which one of the new models are you going to look at? Oh, I don't know, Mary. I can't make up my mind whether to get a Rio or a Chandler. <laughs> a Rio or a Chandler? Yes. Say, Jack, did you read the news? What news? Queen Isabel is that way about Columbus. <laughs> now, cut that out. Don't be funny. Why, Jack, they haven't made a Rio or a Chandler in years. They haven't. I told him that till I was black in the face. <laughs> Well, I'll find a good car. Now, Rochester, turn down here on Hollywood Boulevard. We'll come to Automobile Row. Okay. Uh-oh. Now what? I should have stopped there. Well, you're just lucky that a policeman... Did... <laughs> oh, fine. Stop the car, Rochester. <laughs> I knew this would happen. Is that a policeman coming toward us? It ain't an usher from the Pantages. <laughs> now, let me do the talking, Rochester. What can you say without your rider? I'll get by, don't worry. Oh, uh, good morning, officer. Hey, don't you know it's against the law to turn left on a red light? Yes, but... Uh, I'm going to give you a nice little ticket. But, officer, I came to Hollywood to trade in my car. This car? Yes. Well, you haven't got a minute to lose. Drive on, buddy. <laughs> Thanks. Go ahead, Rochester. Nice guy. Got a good mind to go back and tell that cop a thing or two. Now, Rochester, there's the Packard agency over on your left. Well, we can go right by there. Now, wait a minute. Pull into the service entrance. Why, boss, are you thinking about buying a new Packard? I certainly am. There's vitamin D for you. <laughs> it's not the pills. I just feel like buying a Packard. Stop the car. Come on, Mary, you too, Rochester. I want you to help me pick one out and get a good trade. Okay. Rochester, put that door back on. Quick, quick, before the man comes. Quick, quick, quick! There. Come on, let's go in the showroom. Wow, look at these beautiful new cars. Good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. I'm in the market for a car. Phaeton, Payton, or Schmayton? <laughs> Well, I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, really interested in a convertible coupe. I see. Uh, right over here is our 1941 model. It has the automatic top. Oh, yes. You just press a button and the top goes up and down. Well. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Your top does that without a button. <laughs> oh, do it doesn't. Now, mister, I'm very much interested in the convertible. That is, if we can get together on a trade. I see. <laughs> see. Well, what year car are you driving now? Is it a 1940? No. 1939? No. 1938? No. 1937? I'm going out to eat. This will take all day. <laughs> As a matter of fact, mister, it's a 1921 Maxwell. I beg your pardon? I said it's a Maxwell. Is that a Swiss movement? <laughs> no, it's a Maxwell car, and it's in excellent condition. Well, I'll have to have it appraised. Oh, Mr. Vandermeer. Yeah, Mr. Collins. Will you go outside and appraise this gentleman's car? It's a, it's a, uh... It's a Maxwell. You can't miss it. It says, beat me, daddy, eight to the bar on it. <laughs> Now, please, I'm in a hurry. Okay, okay. The car is really in swell shape, Mr. Collins. It's always been chauffeur-driven. What's the mileage on it? Well, the speedometer says 12,000 miles. You can't go by that, boss. When the speedometer reads 50, we're going 30 miles an hour. Rochester. And when it reads 60, it's half past two. <laughs> Rochester, there's no time to be flippant. Uh, well, Mr. Collins... How much will this Packard cost me? Well, of course, that depends on how much we can allow you on your old car. Here comes Mr. Vandermeer now. Good. Oh, Mr. Vandermeer, did you look over this gentleman's car? Yes, sir. Well, what do you think? I didn't like it! <laughs> now, wait a minute. Don't be too hasty. Did you crawl under my car and take a good look? Not me. I've got a wife and kids. <laughs> Not so dangerous. 
Now, Mr. Collins, I think my Maxwell is worth $700. And he doesn't drink. Quiet. Now, what do you think, Mr. Collins? Well, the best I can possibly offer you on such an old car is $40. $40? Now, Jack, don't argue about it. You're getting a break, believe me. Well, what do you think, Rochester? Is $40 fair? Boss, that's fair, just unbiased, liberal, generous, and hand me a dictionary. <laughs> oh, all right. I'll get my checkbook. How much do I owe you, Mr. Collins? Let me see. With all the standard accessories, less your $40 allowance, that comes to $1,450. $1,450, eh? Okay, I'll make out the check. Packard Motor Company, $1,400. Hey, what'll I do with the old Maxwell, Mr. Collins? Nothing you can do. Just take it out and junk it. And 50... Junk it? What did you say about the Maxwell, Mr. Collins? I said we'll have to junk it. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Collins. That car's got a lot of life in it yet. Oh, make out the check, Jack. Mary, he can't take that little old Maxwell out and junk it. Just throw it on a pile of old scrap metal. Oh, Jack. No, no, he can't do it. <laughs> now, Mr. Benny, I didn't mean to... I don't care what you meant, Mr. Collins. I heard you tell that man to junk my car. Well, I won't stand for it, you hear? I won't stand for it. What are you going to do, boss? We're getting in that Maxwell, Rochester, and we're going home. I'm sorry, Mr. Collins. The deal is off. Come on, Mary. Junk, my little Maxwell. Must have been mad to even think of parting with it. Get in the car, Mary. Okay. All right, Rochester, let's go. Yes, boss. Oh, boy, listen to that motor purr. I should have had my head examined for wanting to trade in little Maxie. There goes the tire, boss. Don't go it at the third one this week. Trouble, trouble, nothing but trouble with this piece of junk. Someday I'm going to trade it in. Friends, how would you like to plan and prepare almost 1,100 meals a year? Well, if you're the average housewife, that's exactly what you do. And no doubt about it, thinking up new ideas for that many menus is no small job. So just to help out a bit, we'd like to pass along a quick, easy suggestion for tomorrow's dessert. It's called Cardinal Pear Mold, and it's a combination of delicious pears and bright red cherry jello. Better yet, it's as simple as it is satisfying. To make it, just prepare one package of cherry jello, as you usually do, and add one eighth teaspoon of powdered ginger. Then mold, and before serving, garnish with sections of fresh or canned pears. The result is a bang up good dessert, one that everybody will like, and one that costs almost nothing to make in the way of effort or expense. So for tomorrow night's dinner, try this grand new Jello idea, Cardinal Pear Mold, a vivid blend of sweet, juicy pears and rich crimson cherry Jello. This is the last number of the third program in the current Jello series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Hey, Mary, let's go home and hear Jack Screengill show. Did he say he's going to do a dramatic sketch with Claudette Colbert? Yeah, what does he want anyway? Good night, folks. <laughs> News for Thrifty Housewives. Log cabin syrup for less money. All three sizes now selling at lowest prices in history. Ask your grocer about his new low prices. Remember, same luscious log cabin syrup. Same high quality, same mellow flavor. Only the price has changed. Tomorrow, buy log cabin syrup at the new low price. The lowest ever. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston. No, Benny. no, Don, not Jell-O. It's Grape Nuts Flakes this year. Oh, my goodness. Oh, darn it. The Grape Nuts Flakes program starring Jack Benny. No, no, not Grape, grape Nuts Flakes. What's the matter with you? Oh, yes, I'll pardon. get fired. The Grape Nuts Flakes program starring oh, Jack Benny God. with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Now we have a new star on our program tonight that I'd like all you listeners to meet. 
This new star is a favorite with millions of loyal and ardent fans all over America. In fact, this particular star is a morning star, a star that enjoys top billing on a coast-to-coast -coast breakfast circuit. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Grape Nuts Flakes, the breakfast treat that has risen to stardom because of its delicious, distinctive appeal. Yes, friends, Grape Nuts Flakes today are America's fastest-growing cereal and have been America's fastest-growing cereal for the past three years. And why? Because of flavor. A flavor that's malty-rich, sweet as a nut, absolutely different from any other cereal in America. And that's because Grape Nuts Flakes are made a different way. They're a blend of two luscious grains instead of only one, sun-ripened wheat and malted barley. And they're toasted, golden brown and crisp, to bring out the rich goodness of each wholesome grain. So feature Grape Nuts Flakes at your breakfast table every morning. For a delicious and nourishing treat, ask for Grape Nuts Flakes in the big 12-ounce economy size package. Pennsylvania polka played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let us turn back the clock one hour and show you what happened on the way to the studio. Jack, in line with the Share Your Car campaign, <laughs> volunteered to pick up the gang in his Maxwell and drive us all down to the first broadcast. Well, that's the least I could do. Anyway, Jack called me and told me to be waiting in front of my house, as he and Rochester would be along just as soon as they'd picked up that. Oh, boy, it'll be great to get back on the air again. Feel good, eh, boss? You said it. I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle As I go riding merrily along Oh, Lily Bell Oh, Lily, well, I'll be... Rochester, put down that banjo. You're driving the car. <laughs> put it down, grab hold of the steering wheel. This is the wheel. I just put strings on it. <laughs> Yes, drive, will you? I got spurs, that jingle. Gee, it sure feels good to be going back to work, eh, Mary? Yeah, but it'll seem funny not broadcasting for Jell-O this year. Well, it's not so much of a change. After all, it's the same sponsor, same station, same time. Well, I hope we have some new material. I'm sick of all those jokes about your toupee. <laughs> Me too. And pull it up a little. You look like Veronica Lake. <laughs> Say, is that bad? I got spurs. Oh. And another thing. You ought to be ashamed having that big sign on the back of the car. What sign? Coming soon. Jack Benny and George Washington slept here. Well, that's... <laughs> that's my new picture. Pardon me, boss, but shouldn't Miss Ann Sheridan's name be on that sign, too? Well, uh... Mr. Benny and Washington were such friends it'd be a shame to have anybody else there. <laughs> Mary, save those quips for the program, will you? Yes, sir. I got spurs that jingle jangle jingle. I got spurs that jingle jangle. As I go riding merrily along. As I go riding merrily along. And they say. Uh oh. Uh oh. Slow up, Rochester. Slow up. What's the matter, boss? Never mind. Slow up. Duck down, Mary. Duck down. What for? Duck down. Duck down. <clears throat> uh, pardon me, miss uh, I'm cooperating in the Share Your Car campaign May I give you a lift to Hollywood? Like I told you yesterday, no <laughs> Okay, okay Drive on, Rochester That's gratitude for you Offer a girl Rochester, take it easy There's a red light up ahead It'll be green, red, and green again Before we get to it <laughs> Just take it easy, that's all. 35 miles an hour. That's the new speed limit. Well, let's get a new motor and have a go at it. <laughs> Listen, Rochester, you're going to miss this little car when we're riding around in that buggy I bought. Hey, that reminds me, I've got to get a horse for that buggy. 
A horse? Oh, then you gave up the idea of letting Dennis pull us. <laughs> well, that was just a wild thought. Besides, if I ever hit him with a whip, his mother would kill me. <laughs> hey, there's Don Wilson waiting for us. Hello, Don! Hello, Jack! Mary! Hello, Don! Hop in, Mr. Wilson! Well, hello, Rochester. Where will I sit, Jack? Right in the middle, or over we go! <laughs> Don't get cute, Rochester. This isn't a canoe. Say, Don, I'll bet you're a little nervous about going on the air for a new product. Yeah, aren't you a little jittery? No, no. Why, I'm just crazy about those good old grapes nuts flakes. <laughs> Don, that's, that's grape nuts flakes. Great. Watch it. Turn here, Rochester. Dennis lives right up the street. I got spurs that jingle jangle. I got spurs jingle, jingle, that jingle, jingle, jingle As I jingle. go riding merrily. As I go riding merrily. They say, oh, wait your flag. Dennis! Dennis! Oh, Dennis! Yes, Mother? Hurry up. Veronica Lake is waiting for you. <laughs> yeah. Here. Here's your hat and your music. Thanks, Mother. And here's ten cents. I'm sure Mr. Betty won't charge more than the bus. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Mother. Here I am, Mr. Benny. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hello Betty. Betty. How, How are you? Where'd you get the red hair, hair kid? Good to see you. <laughs> well... Well, what are you waiting for, kid? Hop in the car. I'm not moving one step until I find out if I get a raise this year. You better get in this car, kid. Kenny Baker is in the tool chest. <laughs> now get in. Yes, sir. All right, Rochester, we got to pick up Mr. Harris now. Well, Dennis, you all set for the first program? I sure am. Oh, by the way, Mr. Benny, I shopped all over for a horse collar, but I couldn't find one to fit me. <laughs> Well, don't bother about it, kid. I'm, I'm getting a horse. I got spurs that jingle. What's a horse got that I haven't got? <laughs> it's, it's nothing against you, Dennis. I'm just getting a horse, that's all. Now, forget it. As I go right... Gosh, and I cut holes in my straw hat so my ears could stick through. <laughs> And they sing, oh, ain't you glad you're single? Get hot, Daddy. And that song ain't so very far from wrong. Oh, Lily Bell. Oh, Lily Bell. <laughs> oh, Lily Bell. Oh, Lily. <laughs> Rochester, don't sing while you're driving. Now turn left here and we'll pick up Mr. Harris. <laughs> I, I told him to be waiting on the corner here. Isn't that Phil up ahead? Where? Right there, and he's pushing a baby carriage. Oh, yeah. He's talking to a street cleaner. That's the nurse. She's got a white uniform on. <laughs> oh, yes. Gee, I'll be glad to see his baby. Hey, Phil! Phil! Hiya, Jackson! Hello, everybody! Oh, Hiya, Hiya, Phil! Hiya, 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 Sir, well, get a load of that baby of yours. Ain't she a Lulu, Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be darned Let me hold her, will you, Phil? Here you are, Mary There now Oh, isn't she a darling? <laughs> <laughs> Say, Phil Phil, are those the little booties I sent the baby? No, nah, they didn't fit, Jackson You must have had awful big feet when you were a kid <laughs> Hey, I, I was a rugged little rascal. Oh, God, Jack. Look at those blonde curls. Mm. <laughs> mm. I used to have curls that made those look like a nickel. Way down to my ankles. Your arms are way down to your ankles, too. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Jack lived on peanuts till he was 18. <laughs> That's 
Let me hold the baby, Mary. Here you are, Don. Careful now, careful. Don't worry, nurse. Coochie, coochie, coochie! <laughs> Gee, she's always laughing. <laughs> Let me hold her, Don. Okay, Jack, here you are. I got her. Coochie, coochie, coochie! <laughs> Now, now, don't be afraid. It's Uncle Jackie. Remember, I gave you those booties. <laughs> here, here, Phil. You better take her. Here, take the kid. Okay. <laughs> well, come on. Let's get going. Oh, isn't she cute? Coochie, coochie, coochie. Dennis, put down the nurse. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Come on, Phil, leave your baby with the nurse and let's get to the studio. Right with you, Jackson. Oh, nurse, I'll be home about 9.30, so be sure and have my bottle ready. <laughs> your bottle? Gin through a nipple. It's out of this world, Jackson. <laughs> I must try it sometime. Come on, Rochester, let's go. Watch the traffic now. Say, Jackson, ain't Alice and me got the cutest kid you ever seen? Sure, cute. Yeah, Phil, I must congratulate you. That baby of yours is a beautiful child. And what a disposition, always laughing. Not while I was holding her, she wasn't laughing. <laughs> well, what are you so mad about? You were holding the kid and she cried a little. That's all that happened. Oh, yeah? <laughs> drive on, Rochester, drive on. Step on it, fellas. We've only got a half an hour before the broadcast. Hope you brought your pass, Jack. You know, NBC has to be pretty strict for the duration. Oh, all that red tape is silly. Come on, fellas, follow me. Just a minute there. Gotta have passes, you know. Gotta have passes. <laughs> passes? Come to regulations. I don't make the rules, you know. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Now, look, officer. Here's my pass. Here's mine. Smile and Phil Harris, the Daily Double. <laughs> hmm. See you later, Mr. Benny. Okay, kid. Now, look, officer, I left my pass at home. Come on, Mary. Oh, no, you don't. One more step and I'll grill you. <laughs> Yipe, he's got a gun. Now, officer, I'm Benny, Jack Benny. Now, get Mr. Swallow, the manager, on the phone. He'll identify Mr. me. Mr. Swallow isn't in. Keep your hands up, you saboteur. <laughs> me, a saboteur? Me? What, what's that package you're hiding under your coat? That's my lunch, a deviled egg sandwich and a banana. <laughs> you want a bite? Mary, tell this guy who I am. I'm Mary Livingston, and he's Jack Benny. Here's my pass. You satisfied? Can we go in now? No hard feelings. Rules, rules, you know. <laughs> You can put that revolver back in your holster. Okay, okay. Dog gone. That's the third toe today. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Let's go inside. All that trouble for nothing. Oh, wait a minute, Mary. Here's the fan mail department. I might as well pick up my bundle. After all, I've been off the air four months, you know. Gosh, look at all the mail here. Fever McGee, Aldridge family, Bing Crosby. We all get it. Oh, miss, is there any mail here for me, Jack Benny? Like I told you yesterday, no. <laughs> I knew I'd seen her someplace before. <laughs> Can't understand it. What's happened to my fans? Why don't they write? Well, maybe they think you're a military secret. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, hello there, Mr. Benny. How's my favorite comedian today? <laughs> Fine, fine. Oh, Mary, I'd like to have you meet Robert Welsh. Uh, Mr. Welsh is the new producer of our program. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Welsh. I kiss your hand, madame. Oh, fine. 
Oh, pardon me, Mr. Welch. Miss Livingston's wristwatch seems to have got caught in your teeth. <laughs> Thanks. Now, Mr. Welch, uh, we're in a hurry, and I'm nervous today. Now, what studio are we broadcasting from well, today? Well, now, let me see. Say, that's important, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it certainly is. Now, you're the new producer. Where are we broadcasting from? Oh, uh, let me see. I'm not getting off a very good start, am I? <laughs> no, you're not. Now, check on it. Check on it, for heaven's sake. Okay, check, 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 check. <laughs> He's so nervous, you know. Oh, here's Wilson. Say, Don, did you find out what studio we're broadcasting from? Yes, Jack. We're in Studio B across the hall here. Good. Let's go in and get our rehearsal started. Well, I'm afraid we'll have to wait a few minutes, Jack. There's a program rehearsing in there now. What program? The Heartaches of Sally Sutton. <laughs> oh, the, the Heartaches of Sally Sutton? Yeah. Say, that's one of my favorites. That program is uh, strictly for housewives. Oh, it is, eh? Well, Rochester and I listen to it every morning while we're doing the dishes. And their soap doesn't give you the dishpan hands, either. Come on, let's go inside and watch them, huh? Oh, boy, I can hardly wait to see Rochester's face tomorrow morning when I tell him everything before it happens. Shh, quiet. And so, chin up. But with fear to <laughs> Sally Sutton faces the bitter realization that her once happy home is about to be broken up. That husband of hers has really been playing around, the rat. Acting on the advice of old Judge Hooper, who lives in the little house at the bend of the road, <laughs> Sally is determined to have a showdown with her husband, Paul. And Rochester thinks they're going to smooth things out. <laughs> Jack, quiet. It is midnight, and Sally, chin up, but with tear-dimmed eyes, is awaiting Paul's arrival. <laughs> ah, good evening, sweetheart. Am I late for dinner? Oh, Paul, how can you call me sweetheart when your mind is on another? Then you. Yes, Paul, I know. I found out all about you and that welder at Lockheed. <laughs> if you're referring to Nancy Randolph, there's absolutely nothing between us. Oh, Paul, lies, lies. I swear it. I've never even seen her in a dress. <laughs> dress or overalls, that Nancy is a siren. <laughs> no use, Paul. This is the end. You mean? Yes. A divorce. A divorce. A divorce. Jack, for heaven's sake. <laughs> oh, Paul. I've forgiven you time after time. First it was that cigarette girl. Then that telephone operator. Then that model. And don't forget that usherette. And then that usherette. <laughs> I, I tell you, Paul, a divorce is our only solution. Very well, my dear. But I'm afraid that our son, Wilbur... Must go with me, his father. No, no, not that. No, no, Paul. Would you take a ten-year-old child away from his mother? You can't do it. I'll fight for him. Oh, boy, wait till tomorrow morning. I'm going to bet Rochester five bucks they're going to get a divorce. <laughs> it's a sin. Please, Paul. He's my child as well as yours. All right, Sally. We'll let the boy decide. Oh, Wilbur! Wilbur, will you please come in here? Yes, your father and I would like to talk to you. Mother, father, did you call me? Dennis! <laughs> Dennis Day, what are you doing on this program? Well, I gotta make some money someplace. <laughs> I don't care, you're working for me. Now listen, kid. Mr. Benny, please, we're rehearsing. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we're on the air in a few minutes, and I've gotta have Dennis. It's our first broadcast. I gotta have the studio. Oh, too. all right, you saboteur. This is a deviled egg sandwich and a banana. <laughs> Now, get out of here and let us rehearse. Now, see here, Dennis. Yes, Father. I'm not your father. That's the other guy. Now, let's get going around here. Dennis, run over your song. We've got to rehearse that. How can he sing without an orchestra? Oh, for Phil, where are the orchestra boys? I don't know. Oh, yes, I put them in Beacon's Warehouse for the summer. <laughs> well, get them out. Get them out. Oh, Jack, don't you think I'd better rehearse the commercial once? After all, this is a new product. Okay, Don, yeah, rehearse it. He will be on the air right away. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, next time you go to your neighborhood grocer, why not ask for America's most distinctive flake cereal? Toasty, brown, sweet as a nut, grapes, nuts, flakes. No, no, Don, not grapes. That's great, great. Oh, darn it. You will find the grape, nuts, flakes are a thrifty buy in the big 12-ounce economy-sized package. 
So be sure to look for the big red letters on the box. Don, that was yellow. These, these are white letters, white. So be sure to look for the big white oh. letters on the no, box. They're little white letters, little Don. So be sure to look for the little white letters on the box. They spell Great Nuts Flakes. There you go again. Oh, what's the matter with you? Here they are, Jackson. Here's the boys. Well, it's about time. Hold everything there. You gotta have passes, you know. You gotta have passes. Oh, get out of here. Now, Don, Don, watch that commercial. It's all right to say grapes, nuts, flakes now. But for heaven's sake, don't make that mistake when we're on the air or our sponsor will have a fit. Holy smoke, does our sponsor have fits? <laughs> no, no, pay attention to the conversation, kid. All right, run over your song. Give him an introduction, Phil, will Okay, you? hit it, boy. I'm a wreck already. Only the first broadcast. <laughs> careful, it's my heart, it's not my watch you're holding, it's my heart, it's not a note I sent you that you quickly burn, it's not the book I lent you that you Never return Remember It's my heart The heart with which so willingly I part It's yours to take, to keep or break But please before you start be careful, it's my heart. Stand by, we're on the air in 60 seconds. Oh, my goodness, hurry it up, Dennis. Finish your song, we're going on the air. Remember, it's my heart. The heart with which so willingly I fought. It's yours to take. To keep or break, but please, before you start, be careful, it's my heart. Good, 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 swell. That song will be okay, Dennis. Now, Mary, Mary, pass out the scripts, will you? We'll be on the air in about 20 seconds. Grab your scripts, everybody. We haven't got any scripts. Your writers didn't bring them in yet. What? No scripts? Stand by, everybody. 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for, for Pete's sake, no script. What are we going to do, Jack? I don't know. I'll have to ad-lib something. I'll tell you what. I'll start by sa out by saying, hello, everybody, this is Jack Benny. You know, folks, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the studio. You leave Phil's baby out of this. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Darn my writers, a fine spot they put me in. Here I am, chin up, but with tear-dimmed eyes and no script. They've had all summer to get this program written. One little program. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly what happened before we were supposed to go on the air tonight. And now, for tonight's show... Don, how can we do a show without a script? You gotta have jokes, you know. You gotta have jokes. <laughs> oh, what's the use? Play something, Phil.
You know, friends, most of us these days are faced with the problem of getting more mileage out of our tires. But homemakers face a different mileage problem. That's how to get more mileage from food by getting more nourishment per spoonful. Well, here's a suggestion for you from the Government Nutrition Program. Eat more of the vital protective foods that you should have every day. That includes whole grain cereals, cereals such as delicious, toasty brown grape nuts flakes. For grape nuts flakes are a whole grain cereal, so they supply important whole grain food values, including iron, niacin, and vitamin B1, extra vitamin B1. For grape nuts flakes, bring you even more B1 to the ounce than you find in the whole grain itself. And honestly, there isn't a more delicious way to get this grand all-around nourishment. For grape nuts flakes are multi-rich, sweet as a nut, crammed full of wide-awake flavorful goodness. Remember, you owe it to yourself to start every morning with the proper nourishment. And you can do that and enjoy it with good-to-eat, nourishing, Great Nuts Flakes. Tell you it isn't worth it. Oh. oh, gosh, that was the most humiliating experience I've ever had. How'd the show go, boss? We didn't have a show, Rochester. No Sir, script. Were your writers over martini again? No, no, they just didn't work. Oh, by the way, Rochester, remind me to tune in on the uh, heartaches of Sally Sutton tomorrow morning. I have a hunch Paul and Sally are going to split up. No, boss, they're in love. Mr. Sutton might play around a little bit, but they ain't never gonna separate. Oh, no? Well, I'll tell you what, Rochester. I'll just bet you five bucks they're gonna get a divorce. And they're gonna fight over the kid, too. Oh, Jack, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, he thinks he knows everything. This'll be a lesson to him. The program is written by Bill Morrow and Ed Beloy. <laughs> Great Nuts Flakes program, the first radio program to come to you from Williams Field near Chandler, Arizona, and starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Friends, the other night I saw a movie about a young man as rich and distinctive as, well, as the rich, distinctive flavor of Grape Nuts Flakes. And he met a young girl as truly appealing as, well, as an appealing bowl full of Grape Nuts Flakes. And when they got married, they lived as happily as, well, as happily as folks who have that grand-tasting Grape Nuts Flakes at breakfast every morning. <laughs> well, friends, the moral of the story is just this. You'll find malty, rich, sweet as a nut grape nuts flakes. The del grape nuts flakes bring you your form of delicate, toasty brown flakes. A flavor that's utterly distinctive because it's a two grain blend of sun ripened wheat and malted barley, toasted golden brown and crisp. Grape nut flakes, America's fastest growing cereal. So, for a smooth tasting, delicious breakfast treat, ask for grape nuts flakes in the thrifty 12 ounce package.
That was This is the Army, Mr. Jones, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Williams Field near Chandler, Arizona, we bring you a man who, after a week under the blazing Arizona sun, no longer looks like a frog's belly in the moonlight, Jack Benny! <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Hmm, frog's belly in the moonlight. Uh, Jello again. I mean, grape nut flakes again. Uh, this is Jack Benny speaking. And Don, although you put it rather crudely, there's no question about it. I do look much better with my desert tan. Yes, Jack, you certainly do. Well, why not? I'm outdoors all the time, horseback riding, swimming. I tell you, Don, I feel like a million dollars. I mean, 25,000. You can't feel like a million anymore. <laughs> You know, Don, this Arizona sunshine seems to have done you a lot of good, too. Oh, it has, Jack. Every afternoon, I've been taking a sun bath up on the roof of my hotel. You? You take sun baths on the roof? That's a little dangerous, isn't it? What do you mean, dangerous? Well, there are a lot of planes flying around here, and from 10,000 feet, you must look like a landing field. <laughs> Really, I'm, I'm not kidding. Oh, now, be reasonable, Jack. From 10,000 feet in the air, I look like an ant. Well, it must be that fat ant of yours that lives in Denver. <laughs> I know a landing field when I see one. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Well, get a load of you. What a tan you've got. Haven't I, though? Tell you, Mary, I look just like those toasty brown grape nuts flakes. Yeah, but you still shake like jello. <laughs> I do not. I'm the picture of health. Gosh, I've been outdoors all week. Well, why don't you get a room? <laughs> I've got a room. I'm living at the Arizona Biltmore, and what a ritzy place that is. The Arizona Biltmore isn't even opened yet. All right, so I have to make my own bed. <laughs> a little bending over isn't going to hurt. But that hotel is lovely. Your kids will have to, you know, you kids will have to come out and visit me. Oh, I'd love to, Jack. Which room are you in? Oh, you can't miss it. It's the one with the boards knocked off the window. <laughs> but do come over. Imagine moving into a hotel that isn't even open. That's the cheapest thing all I ever... All right, all right, forget it. Where are you living? I'm at the Westbridge Ho, and it's one of the most beautiful hotels in Phoenix. It is, eh? But you wouldn't like it. It's got maids and bellboys and telephones and everything. <laughs> You're right. I'd rather rough it at the Biltmore. That's me, huh? <laughs> Tell me, Mary, have you been having a lot of fun this week in Phoenix? Soldiers and cowboys? How can I miss? <laughs> You're always thinking of men. What's the matter with you? Perfectly normal. Look it up. <laughs> I don't mean that. Hey, Jackson, ain't it wonderful here in Arizona? They ain't nothing like them wide open spaces. Oh, hello. Hello, Phil. Yes, yes, it is. And the climate is so grand. Yeah, this air's the nut. That's because there's very little humidity. <laughs> who, who what? Humidity, stupid. That means no moisture. <laughs> I know what it means. I also know how to pronounce it, but I'll be darned if I'll tell you. <laughs> Say, uh, where are you living, Melonhead? <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm glad I put that in, you know? I'm getting, Phil, where, uh... Well, look, Jackson, what? I'm staying at a beautiful place. It's called the uh, Camelback Inn. Oh, at the Camelback, eh? Having a good time? Well, I've gone without water for seven days, if that's what you mean. Well, that's typical of you, Phil. You come to a beautiful place like this and you don't get any rest at all. What are you talking about? I'm under the bed every night by 10 o'clock. <laughs> well, Phil, I'd like to ask you why you don't sleep on top of the bed, but I know your orchestra is there. <laughs> by the way, uh, you and your boys came all the way from Hollywood on the Santa Fe bus, didn't you? All but my guitar player. He bought a new pair of shoes and he wanted to break them in. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Now I've heard everything. Hey, Mr. Benny, I was wondering if I could dedicate my song tonight to oh. my... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Say, Mr. Benny, I was wondering if I could dedicate... What? What'd you say? I was wondering if I could dedicate my... Uh, how, uh, how do you feel out here in the desert, kid? Oh, fine. Good. I had a slight case of cactus in my seat, but it's all out now. <laughs> well, there's a lot of it going around. You know? <laughs> I know about that. 
Jack backed into a cactus the other night. Never mind. <laughs> and he had to take off his pants with a pair of tweezers. <laughs> all right, all right. Say, Mr. Benny, I was wondering if I could dedicate my song tonight to a girlfriend of mine. I'm singing Conchita. Oh, oh, is that your girlfriend's name? No. Conchita? Ba no, Babe Mark. <laughs> Well, what's the, what's the connection between Conchita and Babe Mark? Well, she Conchita more than any girl I ever had. <laughs> Dennis, you better get a big hat. The sun here is taking advantage of you. She was a handsome young Irish lad, she was a Mexican beauty. It was BS and I might add, romantically he was in beauty. A boy and a girl beneath a star. I can tell it in 64 bars. His Irish heart went bingo when he saw the rose of Juarez. Oh. Conchita, Marquita, Lolita, Pepita, Rosita, Juanita, Lopez Oh, you're a lovely thing, oh For me there's but one girl, he says oh. Conchita, Marquita, Lolita, Pepita, Rosita, Juanita, Lopez Mandolin began to play And her lips were there to kiss As they danced, I heard him say New Jersey was never like this. And the bell began to ring old as they rolled away on a mule. To prove I'm not choking, if you're in Hoboken, drop in for a minute and you'll meet Conchita, Marquita, Lolita, Pepita, Rosita, Juanita, O'Toole. Maria, Elisa, and Patsy, and Molly, and Mike, and Jose, and Pancho, and Pedro, and Sancho, and Tommy, and Timmy, and Spike. Of course, there are others. They're sisters and brothers. They're older, and they go to school. There's no more to my song now, so I'll run along. Conchita Rosita Lopez, sung by Dennis Day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a very important announcement to make. Last Monday afternoon, Jack Benny went to an official automobile graveyard in Los Angeles and contributed his famous Maxwell to the junk salvage drive. Yep, little Maxie is going to do her bit in the war effort. So at this time, folks, we would like to reenact for you all that took place on that historic occasion. Gosh, did, did I make history? Why, certainly. They want to take Paul Revere out of the school books and put you in. <laughs> oh, stop. I know better than that. John Paul Revere. What a sailor he was. <laughs> oh, quiet. Continue, Don. Jack felt that his whole radio gang should be present to take a farewell ride in that old jalopy. So he told us to be at his house at 3 o'clock sharp, and we'd all ride to the junkyard. Oh, imagine. Imagine turning a car like this into the junk pile. Why, the motor is in wonderful condition. Wonderful condition? Yes. I lifted up the hood yesterday and the spark plug was playing ring around the fan bill. <laughs> That's a lie because I'm wearing the fan bell. <laughs> you know, fellas, I, I realize I should give my car to the salvage drive, but... Gee, you, you can't blame a fella for being blue and, and all choked up. Did the laundry shrink your collar? No. <laughs> Pay attention. I'm sentimental. 
take it easy, Rochester. No use getting another ticket for speeding. Holy smoke, Jackson. You mean to say you got a ticket for speeding in this car? That's right, Mr. Harris. Our bumper got hooked to a fire truck. <laughs> I don't care how it happened, we were going like the wind. Now watch what you're doing, Rochester, and grab a hold of the steering wheel. I'll catch it the next time it comes by. <laughs> well, you better. Gosh. Imagine after all these years, parting with my little Maxwell. Oh, boy, hey, look at that gorgeous blonde standing on the corner there. Where, where, who, what, what, where? Oh, yeah, I see her. Oh, Jack, put down that telescope. Well, I know the girl. It's Shirley Truebucket. <laughs> hello, hello, Shirley. Remember me? Jeepers, yes. Hmm. Turn here, Rochester. That junkyard is down on Western Avenue. <laughs> Ought to be around here somewhere. There's the sign, Jack. Official automobile graveyard. Oh, yeah. Turn in here, Rochester. Okay. And watch that curve. <laughs> Easy does it. <laughs> well, well, that's it, fellas. That was our last trip. Our last ride in the Maxwell. I'll buy a drink! Never mind. <laughs> uh, uh, hello. Uh, yes, sir. What can I do for you? Uh, I'm Jack Benny. Are you the head man in this junkyard? I'm not wearing this carnation in my overalls for nothing. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Well, I've got a car here I'd like to turn into the salvage drive. This is it right here. Well, we do need junk, but uh, aren't you overdoing it, old man? <laughs> Look, buddy, scrap is scrap. Now, how much am I offered? Now, the rate we're paying here is $7 a ton, so I can give you about $7.50. $7.50? Now, wait a minute, mister. I've got a lot of extras on this car. For instance, the radio and the fog light, this cigarette lighter. What cigarette lighter? Right there. That's a candle. Well, if you can't light a cigarette with a candle, brother, you ought to give up smoking. <laughs> now, how much am I offered? It's still seven fifty. Oh. Now, you can have cash, but if you like, I'll pay you in war stamps. Well, I'll take the war stamps. Yes, sir. Uh, would you like a wet sponge, or have you strength enough to lick them? <laughs> Yes, give me the stamp. I'll handle it. Thanks. Well, that's that. Come on, Jack. Let's get going. Yep. Got to get going, I guess. Yes, sir. Come on, Jackson. Let's get out of here. Yep. <laughs> Got to leave my little Maxie. Oh, well, it's, it's for a good cause. Yep. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Well, come on. Come on, Rochester. <laughs> I'm coming, Walt. I'm coming. <laughs> oh, stop bawling. Or you'll have me doing it, too. Come on. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Several hours later, and Jack has returned to his home in Beverly Hills 
And as we pick him up now, it's about bedtime. Five years. Five years I've had that little Maxwell. Now it's gone forever. Well, I might as well turn in, I guess. Uh, get my pajamas out, Rochester. I put a nightshirt right there on the bed, boss. I don't want a nightshirt. Been getting cold lately, and a nightshirt creeps up on me. This one won't do any creeping. I put stirrups on it. <laughs> good, good. Uh, I don't think I'll bother creaming my face tonight. <laughs> I'm, I'm too tired. My, my complexion is all right. But I got some new stuff from the drugstore. Betty Bunker's Beauty Bomb. <laughs> well, what's that? It says here, put it on and take a snooze, clears up wrinkles on face and shoes. <laughs> well, just, just put it on my shoes tonight. I'm all in. Here, hang up my pants and other shirt. Well, good evening, Mr. Billingsley. Good evening, Mr. Benny. Strip for your physical, I see. <laughs> no, no, I'm just getting ready for bed. I've been very restless lately, you know. Well, in that case, you must try one of my new sleeping pills. Here you are. But, Mr. Billingsley, this isn't a pill. It's a baseball bat. Well, if that doesn't do the trick, you ought to see a doctor. <laughs> hmm, well, thanks, anyway. Don't mention it. Good night, Mr. Benny. Good night. Oh, I haven't seen her in years. <laughs> He's a strange fellow. Boy, am I all in. Pleasant dreams, boss. Brace yourself. Rochester, put down that baseball bat. <laughs> You're as bad as he is. Gosh, this bed sure feels good. Although, how I can sleep with my Maxwell all busted up in that junkyard, I don't know. Boss, why don't you look at it this way? Before you know it, the scrap from your car is going to be part of a battleship or a tank or an airplane. Gee. I tell you, boss, if everybody in the country turned in their old junky cars and dug up all the scrap they could, there wouldn't be no shortage of nothing, especially victory. You're right, Rochester. Absolutely right. Well, good night. Good night, Mr. Benny. If your hot water bottle springs a leak, just put a Band-Aid on it. <laughs> I will. See, no wonder I'm tired. Gee, I practically helped Henry Kaiser build a ship today. Gosh, just think. Little Maxie's gonna be a ship. Or a tank. Or... Uh, or maybe an airplane. Seven dollars a ton. Bombardier Benny? Gee, that's me. I'm a bombardier. Calling Bombardier Benny. Coming. Coming, sir. Bombardier Benny reporting. Did you call me, sir? Yes. What kept you? Sorry, I was creaming my face. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, sir? There's a bummer waiting outside, and you're assigned to the crew. Your destination is Tokyo. Tokyo? Yes. Are you ready? I sure am, Colonel Bridget. <laughs> All set to shove off. Good. You'll find your bomber on the north runway. The pilot's warming up the plane now. Wait a minute. I forgot my radio, my fog light, and my cigarette lighter. Here's a candle. A candle? Yes. If you can't light a cigarette with a candle, you ought to take off that fan belt. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, the colonel's in a happy mood today. Oh, boy. Tokyo. I'm going to blow that joint to smithereens, or my name ain't Bombardier Benny. <laughs> Gee, 
See, look at all those bombers. I wonder which one is mine. Your plane is coming right up. Where? <laughs> well, I'll be... It's my Maxwell. Only it's got wings on it. Maxie. Maxie, speak to me. It knows me. <laughs> It's nice up here. How high are we, Rochester? 10,000 feet, boss. Good. At $7 a ton, that's a fortune. <laughs> well, we're off to Tokyo. We sure are. Uh oh, there's a right, red light up ahead. Slow down, Rochester. Red light? That's the sun. <laughs> well, it just turned green. Step on it. <laughs> Look at that water down there. Is that the Pacific Ocean Navigator? It sure is, Jackson. <laughs> Bill Harris. Are you the navigator, Phil? I ain't wearing this carnation in my nose for nothing. <laughs> oh, yes. Where are we, Phil? Well, according to the calculations I just computed on my Mercator chart, we're at the zenith of the apex, longitude 42, latitude 51, and a wind velocity of $7 a ton. <laughs> what does that mean? Where are we? St. Joe, Missouri. <laughs> they love me there. <laughs> Come on, we gotta get to Tokyo. Gee, I, I hope we brought enough bombs with us. Cigars, cigarettes, bombs. You can't have any fun over Tokyo without a bomb. I'll take a few of those, miss. You want a wet sponge with them, or can you drop them yourself? Yourself? Oh, I haven't seen her in years. <laughs> What's the matter, Rochester? We're running into bad weather, boss. Look at that cloud up ahead. Where? Why, I know that cloud. It's Don Wilson. <laughs> Hiya, Don. <laughs> Hello, Janet. Where are you going? Tokyo. Good. I rained all over it last night. <laughs> you want to come along with us, Clark? I'd love to, but I got to float back to America now and tell everybody about America's fastest growing cereal. Those toasty brown, sweet as a nut, grape nut flame. There you go again. <laughs> it's grape, a grape. Well, come on, Harris, you're the navigator. Which way is Tokyo? I'll have to check my position by radio. Tune it in. <laughs> and so, chin up, <laughs> but with head in the eyes. We find Sally Yoshimoto waiting for her husband, Togo. That's the Japanese radio. We must be on the beam, all right. We've got to get ready. Where's our machine gunner, Shirley Trubucker? Here I am, Mr. Benny. <laughs> Good. Well, we're on the way, fellas. It won't be long now. Hey, who's that passing us? It's Jimmy Doolittle. Oh, yeah. Hello, Jimmy. Hiya, Jack. Good old Doolittle. Follow him, Rochester. He knows where Tokyo is. Gee, it ought to be around here someplace. Look, Mr. Benny, there's a big island right down below us. And that city there in the middle of it is Tokyo. Tokyo. I get set, Harris. We're going into a dive. I wouldn't drink with them lousy lights for a million dollars. <laughs> Rochester, I just had the most wonderful dream. I dreamt I was bombing Tokyo. Tokyo? Did you blow it all up? Not quite. Then I'll stir you up a Welsh rabbit. Let's finish the job. <laughs> That's an 
idea. What a dream. <laughs> You know, Uncle Sam tells us that one of the most vital industries in America is homemaking. Whereas a homemaker, you help to sustain the health and stamina of the home front. And to help you on that job, our government's national nutrition program tells you how to plan menus wisely. To get each day plenty of the essential foods which promote health and vitality. Now that includes whole grain cereals. Cereals such as delicious toasty brown grape nuts flakes. For grape nuts flakes are a whole grain cereal, so they supply important whole grain food values, such as iron, niacin, and vitamin B1. Food values which every one of us need every day to help keep ourselves in robust good health. Yes, grape nuts flakes at breakfast will give you a mighty good start on your daily nourishment needs. So for a grand nutritious breakfast dish that's chock full of delicious flavor, make it malty, rich, sweet as a nut, grape nuts flakes tomorrow morning. The last number of the third program in the Great Nuts Flake series. All kidding aside, ladies and gentlemen, automobile scrap must furnish 5 million of the 30 million tons of steel scrap needed to maintain steel production at its current rate. So sell your old jalopy to an, to an automobile graveyard and help keep the steel mills rolling. I want to thank Colonel Bridget and Colonel Grill for their friendly cooperation here at Williams Field. It was a real pleasure to dedicate this new theater here at the Post. Fine building, no powder room. <laughs> well, it's for the soldier. Good night, folks. The Jack Benny program is written by Bill Maher and Ed Beloy. This program is for the entertainment of Army personnel and does not necessarily constitute an endorsement of its product by the War Department. <laughs> Have you treated your family to Grape Nuts Wheat Meal? It's the new hot cereal that's extra nourishing, extra delicious, extra speedy. Grape Nuts Wheat Meal is a nourishing whole grain hot cereal. Every tempting steaming bowl full is rich with the goodness of roasted wheat with a texture that's smooth but full-bodied. And it cooks in just three minutes. So ask your grocer for the rich hot brown cereal, Grape Nuts Wheat Meal. This program came to you from Williamsfield in Arizona. This is... The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Feeling low. Feeling tense. These eight words are common sense. Smoke a lucky. To be your level best. Smoke a lucky. To be your level Yes, to feel your level best. Smoke a Lucky, because Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense, puts you on the right level to feel and do your level best. That's what fine tobacco can do for you. And remember, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So the next time you buy cigarettes, ask for the cigarette of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. For remember, Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, Calms you down when you're tense. Put you on the right level to feel and do your level best. Yes, smoke a lucky to feel your level best. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, television is not only here, it's here to stay. And like other stars in radio, Jack Benny is preparing for the future. So now we take you out to Beverly Hills. At the moment, Jack is sleeping while Rochester is going about his morning chores. Well, first I better clean up the living room. Mm -hmm, what a mess. Television sure has Mr. Benny worried. Every night he rehearses a different act. But he's certainly serious about it. Last night, he even had a dancing teacher here. Imagine him trying to do that kind of a dance. Oh, well, I might as well pick up his clothes and let the air out of the balloons. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that 
you. He even put an ironing board up on two chairs and used it for a runway. <laughs> Let's see, where will I put these balloons? <laughs> oh, hello, Polly. A pretty girl is like a melody. <laughs> oh, oh, were you here last night when Mr. Benny was taking his dancing lesson? <laughs> <laughs> He'll be happy to hear that Now, Polly, I'll get you some breakfast As soon as I straighten up the Coming! Coming! Oh, good morning, Mr. Mailman Good morning, Rochester Well, there was too much mail to put in the box So I thought I'd bring it in Here are the letters Thank you And here are Mr. Benny's magazines Body Beautiful Uh-huh Women's Home Companion. Uh huh. True Story. Uh huh. Lonely Hearts. Uh huh. And this book, The Manly Art of Self Defense. Say, I didn't know. Oh, uh, pardon me, that goes to Mike Romanoff. <laughs> well, I must be getting along. Uh, is that all the mail you have for Mr. Benny? No, I'm still carrying that letter with postage due on it. But I guess there's no use going through that again. <laughs> No, I guess not. How long ago was that letter mailed? I don't know. It was handed down to me by my father. <laughs> well, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> well, I think I'll take this mail to Mr. Benny's room. It's time he got up anyway. <laughs> Mr. Benny, it's 11 o'clock. Mr. Benny, wake up. Mr. Benny. Gypsy Rose. A pretty girl. Boss, boss, it's only it. me. Oh, oh, good morning, Rochester. Uh, what time is it? It's 11 o'clock. I brought you the mail. Do you want to look at it? Oh, yes, give it to me. Aren't you going to put your glasses on? I can't. I broke them last night when I fell off the runway. <laughs> I mean, the ironing board. I mean... The... It's all right, boss. I know. Well, Rochester, take the ironing board down and hide the balloons. I don't want anyone to know about my dancing. Now, let's see the mail. What's this one? Oh, it's from my violin teacher, Professor LeBlanc. Monsieur Benny. As you know, tomorrow I must give you a violin lesson. I will be there unless I catch pneumonia. <laughs> Please excuse the writing, as it is dark here in the deep freeze. <laughs> hmm. Open the next envelope, Rochester. Yes, sir. Oh, here's a letter from Max Factor. Max Factor? What does he say? Dear Mr. Benny, this is the third letter we have sent you reminding you of your March payment is past due. Either pay it immediately or we'll snatch it off your head. <laughs> Let him snatch it. It's got moth holes all over it. Now, let's see. What's this? Hmm, this is from the California Bank. It's another letter about that loan. What are you going to do, boss? I'm going to turn him down. <laughs> now, let's see. Hmm, that's funny. Here's one from the barber shop on the corner. Dear Mr. Benny, we are writing to all of our customers who got shaved here last Saturday. Are you missing an ear? <laughs> P.S. If not called for in 30 days, we will add it to our collection. <laughs> is there anything else, Rochester? Just the circular. You won't be interested in it. What is it? Here. Yeah. Hmm. Automobile prices reduced. Buy a new car now and save money. Liberal allowances on trade-ins. You know, Rochester, maybe I ought to try and... I'll get it. Oh, oh, say, Rochester, no matter who it is, don't mention anything about the new dance I've been working on. I won't. Remember. Coming! Hello, Rochester. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Come on in. Mr. Benny home? Yeah, he's getting dressed. He'll be down in a minute. Well, then I'll wait. And don't let me interrupt you, Rochester. Go ahead and finish your ironing. Ironing? Yes, you've got the ironing board up, haven't you? Oh, I wasn't using that. You see, Mr. Benny was... Uh-oh. Mr. Benny was what? Well, he was, uh... uh he was, uh... He was getting ready to wallpaper the living room. Well, 
Well, back home I used to help my mother pay for our house, and Mr. Benny is going at it the wrong way. It seems to me well, that... Well, well, good morning, Mary. Oh, good morning, Jack. Rochester told me what you were doing with the ironing board. Oh, he did, eh? <laughs> Rochester, I told you not to say anything about what... But, Jack, you should be glad he told me I can show you a few tricks. <laughs> you... What do you know about it? Oh, I used to do it with my mother. <laughs> What? Oh, Mama was wonderful. She used to work with a brush in each hand. <laughs> a brush in each hand? Didn't your father object? No, if she didn't do it, he'd have to. <laughs> Mary, doll face, what are you talking about? Huh? Wallpapering the house. Oh, oh, wallpapering. Oh, of course. Good boy, Rochester. I'm, I'm going to do that later, Mary, but right now I'm trying to make a big decision. Uh, what big decision? Well, I just received this circular from an automobile company, and I've been thinking maybe I ought to trade in my car and buy a new one. Well, it's about time. What, are you going to get, a Chandler or an Essex? <laughs> oh, don't be funny. I'm going to get a real... I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Jackson. I'm calling from the country club. I thought maybe you'd come out and play some golf. Well, I can't today. I'm going out and buy a new car. Operator, operator, you gave me the wrong number. She did not. <laughs> it's me. And I am going to buy a car. Oh, oh. What kind of a car are you going to get, Jackson? Well, I don't know. I, I was thinking of getting a Cadillac. Operator, operator, why can't I get You've the got right the number? right number? <laughs> I told you it's me. Oh. He asked me if I wanted to play golf, and I told you I couldn't. Well, look, Jackson, I'm running a picture at my house tonight. Would you like to come over and see it? Gee, I'd love to, but I can't. You see, last night I broke my glasses. Oh, how'd you break them? I fell off the runway. Operator! Operator, I wish you'd give me You the got run. it! You got it! <laughs> Phil, it's me, Gypsy. I mean, Jackson! <laughs> Phil... I'm, I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry I can't play golf with you. Why don't you call Remley? I call Remley. He's right here now. Oh, Frankie's with you, eh? Yeah, he's sitting over there at the table drinking a glass of milk. Operator! Operator! <laughs> Somebody else is Oh, no, no, Jack. <laughs> it's me. It's me. Oh. Well, what's... What's this about Frankie drinking milk? Doctor's orders. Drinking too much bourbon. <laughs> oh. That caused a shortage of calcium in his system. Uh-huh. So the doctor made him drink milk. So Frankie could get more calcium? Yeah. That'll make his teeth stronger. <laughs> Why does he want to strengthen his teeth? So he can pull the corks out of the bourbon bottle. <laughs> What? You can't gum them things, you know. <laughs> I know, I know. Anyway, I'm proud of Frankie drinking milk. Let me talk to him, will you, Phil? Okay. Hey, Frankie. Frankie. Frankie! He can't hear a thing since he got a shave last Saturday. <laughs> Phil, do you mean that... So long, Gypsy. We got eight holes to play. All right, goodbye, <laughs> Phil. I can only play 18 holes, but I guess Phil isn't as strong as I am. Uh, Mary, Phil wanted me to play golf with him, but I'm going out and look at some of those new cars. You want to go with me? Oh, sure, Jack. But while you were on the phone, Don Wilson and the sportsman came in. They're waiting for you in the library. Oh. Ah, hello, Don. Hello, Jack. Hiya, fellas. Mm. Well, Don, I, I know what you're here for, but make it quick, will you? Mary and I have to leave in a few minutes. Okay. Now, Jack, we've got a wonderful arrangement of Mendelssohn's Spring Song. And as a surprise, we put in a special violin part for you. Oh, Don, really, you, you shouldn't have done that. Well, we can take it out. Oh, no, no, I've got the violin right here, <laughs> under my chin. I mean, uh, just, uh... <laughs> uh, just give me the music. Please. Here you are. <laughs> okay, now, uh, all right, now just a second while I, I tune up. One second, Don, I get him. <laughs> now, let's...
let's see. Um, a Mendelssohn spring song. Oh, yes, I, I uh, start it, don't I? Yeah, yeah, Jack. All right, uh, here we go, fellas. Mendelssohn spring song. The boys have gone. Oh, oh. Well, come on, Mary. Let's go downtown and look for a new car. Rochester, we're ready to go. <laughs> Rochester, the traffic's pretty heavy. Take it easy, will you? Uh, Jack, what kind of a car are you going to get? I'm not sure, Mary. You know, all the new models look so nice, and they have so many novel features. Like the Nash, for instance. I mean, the way the seats make up into twin beds. You know, maybe that's what I'll get. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You'll have the only car in the country that takes in borders. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of that, Mary. I just thought that maybe... Say, boss, how long have we been driving? Exactly 14 minutes. You better start looking for a service station. Yeah, no time to lose. Uh, Jack, why do you have to hurry for a service station? Well, you see, Mary, every time the car dries for 15 minutes, the water in the radiator boils over, and then it takes... It's all so painful! <laughs> now stop the car, Rochester. Well, I guess we'll just have to sit here for a few minutes until it cools off. That's about all. Say, Emily, Emily, isn't that Jack Benny over there? Where? Over there in that Stanley steamer. Oh. <laughs> that isn't a Stanley steamer. It's a Maxwell that blew its top. <laughs> then it is my dream man. Steady, girl, steady. 
You really have a crush on him, haven't you? Yes, and you know, Emily, I've got a confession to make. Last February, I sent Mr. Benny a Valentine card. Did he get it? He must have. I put it in my laundry bundle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, does he do your laundry? Yes. Oh, when I think of him ironing my petticoats with his own little hands, <laughs> I break out in goose pimples. <laughs> How romantic. What did you say on your Valentine card? It was a beautiful poem. I wrote it myself. It went, Dear Jack, when I think of you this Valentine's Day, I can throw my vitamin pills away. <laughs> well, I'll bet he didn't answer it. He did, too. He said, Your lovely poem made me shake and shiver, and starting May 1st, we pick up and deliver. <laughs> Martha, open your eyes. I think they're going to drive off. Rochester, the car should be cool enough now. Let's go. Jack, the street we're climbing to is Figueroa. That's Automobile Row. Yeah. Turn right here, Rochester. Yes, sir. Gosh, look at all the automobile dealers on this street. Honest John... The Smiling Irishman, Madman Munts, Psychiatric Sam, <laughs> Wild Man Pritchard. Ah, here's the place we want. Just Plain Bill. <laughs> uh, stop in front of this place, Rochester. Now, Rod, you can park down the street a little ways and wait for us. Come on, Mary. Okay. Gosh, Jack, they certainly have some beautiful cars on display here. Yes, I hope this doesn't take too long. I, I wouldn't want Rochester to get a ticket. He can't afford it. <laughs> and besides, I have oh, to... Oh, here comes the salesman. Where? Oh, yes. Oh, mister... Uh, how do you do? Uh, how do you do? I'm thinking of buying a new car. Oh, good, good. Were you thinking of any particular type? Well... Uh, Would you li like a hydromatic? A hydromatic? Yes, that car comes without a clutch. Look, brother, when I pay for a new car, I want a clutch and everything. <laughs> Say, uh, this car here looks pretty good. Yes, Jack, it's really a sporty-looking number. Uh, get inside and see how roomy it is. Okay. It sure is comfortable, and... Say, what are these buttons? Oh, oh yes, uh, those are for the windows. I'll, I'll, I'll show you how they work. Gee, uh, what other new features do they have? Well, I'm glad you asked that. This is the only car in the market that comes equipped with a Dynaflex super-flowing Unijet turbovasculator, <laughs> which is synchromeshed with a multi-coil hydrotension duo-vacuum dynamometer. Gosh. Uh, what does that do for the car? It empties the ashtray. <laughs> That's quite a feature. Uh, Mary, uh, do you think I ought to get this car? Well, certainly. I wouldn't think of having a car that's not equipped with a Dynaflex superflowing Unijet turbovascular, which is synchromesh with a multi-coil <laughs> hydrotension duo vacuum dynamometer. meter. <laughs> dynamometer. What? Mary, you've mispronounced the word with. <laughs> Gee, the, the more I see of this car, the more I like it. But tell me, uh, Mr., uh, Mr.... Call me Plain Bill. <laughs> uh, well, look, uh, Plain Bill. <laughs> what are all these other buttons for? Well, they're for the heater, the radio, the lights, and the top. Uh-huh. But what's this red button for? Oh, that red button is for emergencies. Emergencies? Uh, yes, like if you stall the car on the railroad tracks and the train is coming at 100 miles an hour, you press the red button. <clears throat> And that gets the car off the tracks? No, it makes a reservation for you at Forest Lawn. <laughs> hmm. You know, Jack, 
Jack, this is one of the prettiest convertibles I've ever seen. Why don't you take it? I think I will, Mary. Uh, tell me, plain bill, uh, what's the... Um, What's the, what's the price of this car? Uh, $4,200. Uh, say, mister, do the windshield wipers on this car squirt water when you press the button? Yes. Well, squirt some on him. He fainted. <laughs> I didn't faint, Mary. Just that $4,200 is a lot of money. But don't forget, we do make liberal allowances on, on trade-in. Well, my car's right outside. Suppose you come along with us and appraise it. Yes, well, I, I'd be very glad to. Right this way. <laughs> now, uh, uh, which one of these cars is yours? Oh, it's parked down the street a little ways. There it is right there. You mean that blue Kaiser? No, no, it's behind the Kaiser. <laughs> oh, the gray DeSoto. No, no, my car's between the Kaiser and the DeSoto. Here it is. I'll admit it doesn't look like much right now, but a little paint and polish and she'll be as good as new. What did you get, boss? A convertible or a sedan? Uh, nothing yet. This gentleman is going to appraise ours. Uh, tell me, has this car been in an accident? <laughs> no. Well, then how come it bulges so much in the rear? Middle-aged spread. <laughs> Don't be silly. That's the way this car was built. And it has a lot of advantages that the new cars haven't got. Yeah, if you like tea, it boils water every 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, stop. This man is a good judge of cars. Now, plain Bill, uh, get in and I'll, um, I'll show you how it runs. Come on, Mary. Uh, start the car, Rochester. Yes. a little... Plain Bill, where are you going? To get a whip and a chair. This thing is dangerous. <laughs> no, no, it'll be all right. Uh, try it again, Rochester. <laughs> See? I, I told you it'd be okay. Do you want me to drive around the block, boss? Uh, just a second. If I am going to appraise this car, I had better drive. No, I'll drive. You shovel the coal. <laughs> You better let him drive, Bill. He's more used to it. Well, it's irregular, but okay. See, I told you, it rides very smoothly, doesn't it? Not bad. Uh, now, how much of a trade-in do you think you can give me on it? Well, now, let me see. There's a little rubber on the tires. The body needs a paint job. The upholstery isn't too bad. The motor runs. Look, would the deal include the car's radio? Yes, yes. Now, how much will you allow me on the car, including the radio? Three dollars. <laughs> Three dollars? You better grab it fast, Jack. The ride's made him dizzy. I will not. I wouldn't think of trading in this car for three dollars. It's perfect mechanically. They don't make cars like this today. Everything built to last for years and gives you excellent service. And all the way... Uh, oh, plain Bill. Yes? Lemon or cream? <laughs> Lemon and mine, Mary. Mary! Now, Bill, all kidding aside, how much will you allow me on my car? Three dollars. But this car... There is no use arguing. This thing is without a doubt the oldest, worst, most beat-up piece of junk I have ever seen. Well... <laughs> Settles it. Rochester, stop the car. Plain Bill, I'll thank you to get out. Rochester, open the door. That won't be necessary. It fell off. <laughs> well, goodbye to you, sir. Goodbye. Rochester, drive on. Yes, sir. This car is good enough. I can keep it for quite a while yet. You know, boss, if you're not going to get a new car, why don't you have this one fixed up? Put some of those modern things on it. Like what? 
like the Dynaflex Super Flowing Unijet Turbo Vasculator, which is synchronous with the multi coil hydro tension dual vacuum dynamometer. <laughs> No, no, then I'd have to go out and buy an ashtray. <laughs> Step on it, Rochester. I want to go home. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment. But first... Feeling low. Feeling tense. These eight words are common sense. Smoke a lucky. To be a level best. Smoke a lucky. To be a level Yes, Lucky's Fine Tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense, puts you on the right level to feel and do your level best. It's important to know that fine tobacco can do this for you. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. It's not surprising that more independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. So when you choose your cigarette, remember, Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense, puts you on the right level, the lucky level, where you feel your best and do your best. Yes, the next time you buy cigarettes, ask for a carton of Lucky Strike. Smoke a Lucky to be your level best. Smoke a Lucky to be your level best. Jack, you gonna stop off at any other car dealers? No, no, Mary, I've made up my mind. I'm going home. This car will just have to do until I get up. A... Jack! Jack, what happened? Your hair is gone. It's my fault, Miss Livingston. I never should have driven by Max Factors. <laughs> all right, all right. Let them keep it. Be sure to hear Dennis Day in a day in the life of Dennis Day. Statesman for the Amos and Andy Show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Now Venus is a gorgeous girl, but life for her is rough. A statue simply cannot smoke a lucky puff by puff. I drive a cab in my hometown, I know what people like. That milder, richer cigarette whose name is Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Enjoy your cigarette. Enjoy truly fine tobacco that combines both perfect mildness and rich taste in one great cigarette, Lucky Strike. For only fine tobacco gives you both real mildness and rich taste. And LSMFT... Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So, friends, be happy. Go lucky. Try a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy. Go lucky. Be happy. Go lucky. Strike. Be happy. Go lucky. Go lucky. Strike today. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yesterday we had rehearsal. About noon, Jack, Phil, Dennis, and I walked across the street to the corner drugstore for some lunch. Gee, the drugstore's crowded today. Yeah, I hope it doesn't take too long. Hey, Merv, you got a table for us? No, but there'll be one empty in a minute. Would you mind waiting? No, but bring a chair for the old man. He walked all the way across the street. 
Stop being funny. For your information, Phil, every morning right after breakfast, I walk five miles all over Beverly Hills. Why do you do that, Jack? He's collecting rent. <laughs> That's only on the first of the month. Hey, look, Jackson, as long as we have to wait, I want to buy some things at the drug counter. Will you hold a seat for me? Okay. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Harris? Look, I want a large tube of toothpaste, some aspirin, a bottle of mouthwash, and uh, a box of bobby pins. Yes, sir. Uh, what color is your wife's hair? Blonde, but she buys her own. <laughs> Very good, Mr. Harris. Uh, will there be anything else? Yeah, now, let me see. Uh, oh, yeah, I better get some cough drops. I've had a tickling in my throat since last night. Well, maybe it's a piece of cork. <laughs> Now, uh, what kind of cough drops do you want? Oh, I don't care. Just give me a box of those that are made right here in L.A. L.A.? Yeah, it says so right on the box. Los Angeles. That's lozenges. <laughs> oh, oh. Your table is ready, Mr. Benny. Okay, I'll get the others. Phil! Right here, Jackson. Dennis! Oh, just a second, Mr. Benny. I'm weighing myself. How much do you weigh, Dennis? 370 pounds. <laughs> 370 pounds? I invited Don to be my guest. <laughs> well, what good is... Oh, never mind. Come on, kids. Let's get to the table. Hey, Marvin, we're in a hurry to get back to rehearsal, so give us quick service, please. Uh, yes, Mr. Benny. I'll take the orders myself. Good. What'll you have, fellas? I'll have a chicken sandwich on rye bread. Yes, sir. You, Mr. Wilson? Oh, I'll have a small glass of tomato juice and a slice of whole wheat toast. Don. Son, is that all you're eating? Yeah, Jack, I'm on a diet, and that's all I've had for three full days. Dennis, where are you going? When he's that hungry, I don't, I don't want to be close to him. <laughs> oh, sit down. Yes, sir. What do you have, Mr. Day? I'll have a cucumber split. <laughs> uh, a cucumber split? What in the name of Duncan Hines is that? <laughs> well, it's like a banana split, only you use a cucumber. <laughs> Dennis, ice cream on a cucumber? That must taste awful. Oh, not if you peel it. <laughs> <laughs> well, his answer was all right. Maybe my question was silly. <laughs> How he can eat that, I don't know. Yeah? What do you have, Mr. Penny? Let's see. I want to look at the sandwich list. Hamburger, cheeseburger, chicken burger, onion burger, turkey burger, chili burger, Max burger. <laughs> Max burger? What's that? That's a proprietor. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what to order. Why don't you try a cucumber split? Dennis, if I live to be a hundred, I'll never eat a thing like that. It sounds horrible. If you haven't tried it, don't knock it. <laughs> oh, keep quiet. See, I don't know what to eat. I just haven't any appetite. Yeah, I haven't felt like eating all day. Don't take it personally, Jackson. They raised everybody's taxes today. <laughs> I know, I know. Mervyn, I'll have a bacon and tomato sandwich. Yes, sir. What do you gentlemen have to drink? Coffee for me. I'll have a Coca-Cola. Bring me three fingers of milk. <laughs> Phil. Phil. Three fingers of milk? I'm on the wagon, but I don't want to forget how to order. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, by the way, Jackson, uh, Remley asked me to thank you for the raise you gave him. That's all right, Phil. Anytime your music is improved, I appreciate it. Why, Jack, what did Frankie do? He broke his arm and he can't play. <laughs> What a nice guy. <laughs> How'd Frankie break his arm, Phil? Well, we were having a little party at Bagby's house, and it was a warm night, so Frankie ran out and took a dive in the pool. Oh. No water in the pool, eh? No pool. <laughs> well, no wonder he broke his arm. He didn't do that till the third dive. <laughs> what? He swam around the backyard like a mole. <laughs> Oh, fine. <laughs> Here's your food, gentlemen. 
Thanks. Now, eat, let's eat fast, kids, so we can get back to rehearsal. Well, Jack, look who's walking over here. Why, it's Mr. Kitzel. Hello, Mr. Bianchi. Sit down, Mr. Kitzel. Have some lunch with us. No, thank you. I eat already. <laughs> I have the blue plate special. Hoo-hoo. A bargain. <laughs> you mean you, you didn't like it? Who could like it? Such small portions they give you. Six green beans, two potato chips, and a piece of steak. J. Edgar Hoover couldn't find it. <laughs> Well, that's, that's too bad. Too bad. If it wasn't for the dessert, your whole meal would be awful. Oh, what'd you have for dessert? A cucumber split. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, you didn't... Well, maybe it's good. I don't know. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. I got to run along now. I got to pick up my boy and take him to his scout meeting. Oh, oh, is your son a Boy Scout? Is he a Boy Scout? <laughs> <laughs> you know, only two weeks ago he joined, and when I asked him, what did you learn, he rubbed together two sticks and burned down the whole house. <laughs> Bur burned down the house? Uh-huh. When the fireman came, he helped them across the street. <laughs> no. Uh-huh, and with his little knife, he carved, be prepared, in their fire hose. <laughs> oh, Mr. Kitzel, you're joking. Oh, <laughs> my. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. So long, Mr. Kitzel. <laughs> Well, fellas, we better get going, too. We've got a lot of rehearsing to do. Here's your check, gentlemen. Oh, I'll take it, fellas. I think it's my turn. No, no, Dennis, it's my turn. Oh, no, 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 Phil, it's my turn. No, no, Don, it's Phil's turn. <laughs> I keep track of these things. Now, come on, let's go. Dennis, what are you doing at the jukebox? Well, one of my songs is on it, and I want to play it. Well, go ahead, and then come right to the studio. Okay. Got a nickel? No! <laughs> now, let's go, fellas. There will be many other nights like this Don, 
Don. Don, have you got the scripts there? Yes, Jack. Come on, Jack. I want to get home. Let's get the rehearsal started. Phil, we can't. Mary isn't here yet. Is there anything wrong with her? I don't know. I, I hope she's feeling all right. How'd she look this morning when you collected her rent? <laughs> she was all right. She was a little concerned about the controls going off, but then I don't blame her, you know. I'm going to call her up and see what's keeping her. Oh, my ball. What is it, guys, Phil? <laughs> Mr. Benny's line is working. Yeah, I wonder what Born to be Bad wants now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll plug in and find out. Yes, Mr. Benny. Yes, sir, I'll see if she's home. He wants I should get him Mary Livingston. I'll try her number. Say, Goitu, you think there's a romance between Mr. Benny and Miss Livingston? Could be. On the first program of the season, I saw Mary wearing an orchid he gave her. Well, what makes you so sure Mr. Benny gave it to her? It's the same one he let me wear on New Year's. <laughs> Keeps it in a deep freeze. <laughs> uh, come to think of it, Gertrude, there could be something between Jack and Mary because Thursday night when I was at the Mocambo, I saw them there together. Gee, you were at the Mocambo? Yeah. Who took you? Nobody. I went stag. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not ahead of me. I went to the Mocambo once, too, and with Jack. Jack Benny. Then you didn't go stag? No, I went Dutch. <laughs> Say, you know, Mabel, you should see the change that's come over him since he came back from Europe. He's so continental. Now when he sees you, he bends from the waist and kisses your hand. <laughs> My, how romantic. Yeah. But you gotta straighten him up faster. He stays that way all the <laughs> No, it happened the night we went to the Macombo. And he was bent over all evening? How could you dance with him? It was awful. When the music started, he came at me like a USC fullback. <laughs> if you hadn't played for Notre Dame, you'd have been in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Operator, operator. I'm sorry, Mr. B, but Miss Livingston's line doesn't answer. Oh, well, never mind. I'll call her later. Gee, fellas, Mary's phone doesn't answer. I wonder where she is. Maybe she was drafted. <laughs> oh, be quiet! <laughs> Look, fellas, let's rehearse until... Come in! Mr. Benny, you want it on the phone in the hall. Well, excuse me, fellas, maybe that's Mary. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Oh, hello, Rochester, what is it? Brace yourself, boss, I've got news for you. What is it, Rochester, what is it? Your car's been stolen. <laughs> My car stolen? This is awful. There's two schools of thought on that. <laughs> Rochester, I'm in no mood for jokes. Is my car really stolen? Yes, boss, it's gone. Oh, this is terrible. Just yesterday, I put in five gallons of gas. <laughs> Ethel, yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What are you going to do, boss? Well, don't worry, Rochester. I'll get my car back. The Beverly Hills police are on their toes. They could be on their knees and catch that car. <laughs> Never mind. Just meet me at the police station. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, uh, was that uh, Mary Jack? No, Don. It was Rochester. What do you think happened, fellas? What? My car was stolen. Your car? Yes. Gee, and only yesterday you drove me home and maybe put in five gallons of gas. <laughs> then. Ethel, yes. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, look, fellas. Rehearsal is off. I gotta get down to the police station. Now, where's the quartet? Oh, sportsman, sportsman! Did you hear the news? Someone stole Mr. Benny's car. 
Someone stole Jack Benny's car and drove it right away. It makes us feel so very sad, we just can't help but say, Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. People call me Madman Munch, with them I can't agree. The guy who stole Jack Benny's car is crazier than me. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. My name is Ronald Coleman, and I live next door to Jack. I hope the man who stole that can will never bring it back. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. My name is Mr. Cassidy, to you I'm known as Hoppy. My horse can't understand who'd steal that broken down jalopy. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Is Woody Woodpecker, I laughed the whole day through. And since they stole Jack Benny's car, I've got a reason to. Well, here it is, Beverly Hills Police Station. What a classy place. Look at that sign over the door. Through these portals pass the toughest policeman in the world. <laughs> Uniforms by Adrian. <laughs> well, I'd better go in. I wonder where I... Oh, there's a girl at that desk. i better ask her. Oh, miss? Yes? I'd like to report a stolen car. Do you have an appointment? <laughs> no, no, I just want to report a stolen car. Well, we're not very busy today. Perhaps we can work you in. Well, good, good. <laughs> uh, you may go to the office on the right and see Sergeant Vandermeer. Well, thank you. Uh, Sergeant Vandermeer? Uh, yes? I'd like to report that my car was stolen. Uh, do you live in Beverly Hills? Yes, yes, I do. What kind of a Cadillac was it? <laughs> well, it, it isn't a Cadillac. Uh, a Lincoln? Well, uh, come, come, mister, what kind of car is it? It's a, a, a Maxwell. <laughs> From what country? <laughs> No, no, you see, it was made in this country. That is, well, they don't make them anymore, although the factory is still in existence. They make pencil sharpeners. <laughs> they had some cranks left over, so it was easy to convert. <laughs> I see. Now, tell me, from where was your car stolen? Well... Boss! Oh, hello, Rochester. The girl at the desk told me you were in here. Oh, Sergeant, this is my butler, Rochester Van Jones. He discovered the theft. Oh, the butler, eh? <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Van Jones. Huh? Now recount in your own words the events of the entire day. Well... Don't be nervous, Rochester. I'll stand behind you. Well, Mr. Benny left the house at 10 o'clock. He called me out of my room and said... Rochester, I'll be gone all day, so I want you to clean the kitchen, beat the rugs, wash the windows, polish the stove, wax the floors, and press my clothes. That's right, that's right. I remember telling him to do all those things, and I left at 10 o'clock. Now, Rochester, where were you at 10.15? Back in my room, asleep. <laughs> asleep? Rochester. Be quiet, quiet, Mr. Benny. Tell me, Rochester, when did you first discover that the car was stolen? I heard the motor as it went out the driveway. Oh, I see. You were sleeping, but you just happened to wake up in time to hear the motor. I didn't just happen to wake up. It threw me out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> now, look here. Uh, just I... a minute, minute, Sergeant. You're suspecting the wrong man. Y yes. Yes, I guess I am. It always happens. For 20 years, I've been listening to mystery programs on the radio, and it's always the butler. Always the butler. They drive you nuts. Why do I keep listening to them? Why? I ask! Why? 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 
can control yourself. <laughs> yes. Yes, I must control myself. Now, where were we? Oh, yes, yes, your car was stolen. Have it here on the report. Make matchful. That's right. Will you give me a description, please? Well, it has a black body with blue fenders. That is, two of them are blue, and one is green, you see? Uh, what about the fourth one? Well, the color of that one changes. It's made out of lizard skin. <laughs> Any other identification? Well, there's a foxtail hanging rather casually over the, you know, from the radiator cap. And now let me see what else. Oh, yes, the, the top goes up and down, you see. Oh, oh, a convertible. No, the top just goes up and down. <laughs> That's right. You see, we have no windshield to fasten it to, and it's uncomfortable wearing that chin strap, you know. <laughs> Uh, we'd better not waste any more time, Mr. Benny. Now, if you just follow me, we'll go down to the radio room and report the theft to our prowl cars. Just follow me. Come on, Rochester. You look at those pictures on the wall. Dillinger, pretty boy Floyd. Oh, look, there's a picture of my agent. <laughs> yeah, I hope I get my car back. Don't worry, Mr. Benny. We'll not only locate your car, but we'll apprehend the criminal. You see, we'll take fingerprints off the steering wheel. Well, maybe you ought to get the fingerprints off the door handle. Why? We haven't got a steering wheel. <laughs> That's ridiculous. What do you do when you get to a corner? How do you make a turn? We jump out and kick the front wheel. <laughs> Rochester. When we get the car they circle, we go crazy. <laughs> Rochester, please. Well, here's the radio room. Oh, before we go in, Mr. Benny, have you thought of a reward? Well, no. If I just get my car back, it'll be enough. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. This way. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Go to 700 North Rexford. See the man about a disturbance. This is Johnson. That is all. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Go to the corner of Doheny and Wiltshire. Code 62. Terry speaking. That is all. Now, Mr. Benny... Which one of our announcers would you prefer to broadcast the information about your missing car? <laughs> Lieutenant Johnson or Sergeant Carey? Uh, what's the difference? Well, Sergeant Carey has a higher hooper. <laughs> <laughs> More of our prowl cars listen to him. Really popular, really popular, eh? Popular? <laughs> CBS wants to star him in a program called People Are Crooked. <laughs> Oh, what do you know? Sergeant, tell him to send out the alarm about my car. Uh, certainly. Here, Carrie, add this one to your list. Yes, sir. Calling all cars, calling all cars. Keep a lookout for these stolen vehicles. Hudson, license number WY7469, Cadillac, DE3327, Maxwell, PU8054. <laughs> Gee, I hope they find it soon. That is all. Good night, Irene. <laughs> Gosh, if I don't get my car back, I don't know what I'm going oh, to Mr. do. Oh, Mr. Benny, Mr. Benny. Dennis, what are you doing here? Well, I had to see you, Mr. Benny. Are you sure somebody stole your car? Of course I'm sure. Why? Well, when I left the studio, I went home. Uh-huh. And when I went into the house, I said, Hello, Mother, somebody stole Mr. Benny's car. And then it happened. What happened? She filled me full of black coffee, put an ice bag on my head, and called Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> Alcoholics Anonymous? I go to my first meeting next Tuesday. What? I could go on Thursdays, but I'd rather go with Phil. <laughs> well, you can tell your mother... Car 28 calling in. Car 28 calling in. This may be it, Mr. Benny. This report may concern your car. Oh, good, good. Okay, car 28, come in. We found the Maxwell, license number PU8054. That's it, that's it. The car was found at 360 North Camden Drive. That's my house. They brought it back. <laughs> Watch it. Did you hear that? They brought it back. They this, brought it back. This is the third time. Yeah. <laughs> quiet, quiet, please. Tell me, Car 28, did you apprehend the criminal? Only the one that was limping. The other one got away. You say one of them was limping? Did you shoot him? No. His toe was broken from kicking the front wheel. <laughs> Well, how do you like that? They must have gone by way of Carthay Circle. Come on, Rochester, let's go home. 
Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. In science and biology, in math and chemistry, there never was a formula like LSMFT. Yes, luckies get our loudest cheers on campus and on dates. With college gals and college guys, a lucky really race. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Yes, friends, be happy, go lucky, enjoy your cigarette. For luckies always give you perfect mildness. In fact, scientific tests confirmed by three independent consulting laboratories prove Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand. And together with mildness, you always get rich taste, too. All the deep-down smoking enjoyment that comes from truly fine tobacco. For LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So, friends, be happy. Go lucky. Try a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Look, Rochester, the thieves did bring my car back. There it is in front of the house. Yeah. See, I hope they didn't damage it. Jump in, Rochester, see if it'll start. Okay. <laughs> Listen to it, Rochester. Listen. Yeah, it was just as good as ever. It certainly is. Good night, folks. Be sure to hear Dennis Day in the day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> Transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike, the cigarette that tastes better. Light up, the Lucky. It's light up time. Be happy, go lucky. It's light up time for the taste that you like. Light up, the Lucky Strike. Relax. It's light up time. This is Don Wilson, friends, and I certainly agree. There's no time like right now to light up a Lucky and find out firsthand what real deep-down smoking enjoyment is. I mean the enjoyment that comes from better taste, because a Lucky tastes better every time. And the reasons why are world famous. First of all, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So fine, so light, so mild, it just naturally tastes better. And then something very important happens to Lucky's fine tobacco. It's toasted. It's toasted is the famous Lucky Strike process that brings Lucky's naturally good-tasting tobacco to its peak of flavor, tones it up to make it taste even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. So right now, while the show gets underway, or whenever it's light-up time for you, be happy. Go Lucky. Enjoy Lucky Strike, the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. For the taste that you like, light up a lucky strike right now. Light up a lucky. It's light up time. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, once a week, the Beverly Hills Beavers have a meeting to discuss matters pertaining to the good and welfare of the club. As we look in on them now, one of their meetings is in progress. Now, the motion before the House is, resolved that the Beavers spend their treasury consisting of $13.72 on a party, or 
Instead of a party, we should put the money in the bank and save it. We will first hear arguments in favor of having the party. You, Joy, may have the floor. I think we should have the party because they're fun. We all had a good time at our last party. Yeah, but at this one, let's not have any girls. <laughs> what are you talking about, Jimmy? At the last party, the way you carried on with Kathy... She did all the carrying on, Harry. I wanted to sit with the rest of you fellows, but Kathy led me into a dark corner where the lights were low. <laughs> Gee, what happened? She ate my ice cream. <laughs> I think girls are fun at a party. I don't know. I agree with Jimmy. The last party, we fellows wanted to go out and play tag or hide and go seek and baseball. But the girls made us play post office. Oh, boy, was that disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Look, fellas, let's decide first whether we're going to have the party or save the money. Then we can decide whether we want girls or not. But if we want the party, what are we going to have to eat? Oh, the usual thing. Popcorn, Cracker Jack, or Henry bars, peanuts, chocolate caramels, popsicles, jelly apples, Dad's old-fashioned root beer, marshmallows, and ice cream. What do we have for dessert? <laughs> <laughs> Look, fellas, first let's settle where we're going to have the party. Then we'll discuss the details. We have heard discussion in favor of spending the money in our treasury on a party. Now we will hear from the other side. Well, I think... <laughs> I think we ought to put the money in the bank. Fellow beavers, while I'll admit that parties are fun, you've got to be practical and save money. And compared to money, parties are incons... Incons... Inconsequential. Yes, yes. <laughs> Inconsequential. I N C O. I know how to spell it. <laughs> now, look, kids. Uh, don't get me wrong. I enjoy a good time, too. I was young once myself. Well, I remember when I was a kid, we used to have parties with girls and everything. Gee, did they have girls in those days? <laughs> Sir. Now, look, fellas, if you want to have a party, I'll show you I'm a good sport. We can have the party at my house. Fine. I make a motion that we adjourn. I second the motion. I'm glad we got the meeting over early so I could walk home. Gee, the boys were cute today discussing the party. I'll never forget the first party I ever attended when I was a kid. I met a girl there named Betsy, and boy, did I have a crush on her. And after that party, I never saw Betsy again. I understand she was busy making a flag or something. <laughs> Sometimes I think that the... Oh, I better get out of the way of the man riding up on the horse there. Hello, Mr. Benny. Why, Mr. Kitzer. <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, what are you doing on that horse? Who this I do occasionally for the exercise. Well, it seems a pleasant way of working out. Working out, yes. Pleasant, no. <laughs> Why? What do you mean? Well, when the horse is going down, I'm going up And when the horse is coming up, I'm coming down And when we are coming together, it's not exactly inconsequential Inconsequential? I-N-C I know how to spell it! <laughs> Uh, Mr. Kitzel, is this your horse? No, I'm renting him occasionally from a riding academy, but he's a very... <laughs> easy, easy, steady Mendel. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Kiss, the horse's name is Mendel? Only when I'm riding him. <laughs> Now, like I started to tell you, he's a very smart horse. You know, he's been on television, in movies, everything. Oh, he does many tricks. Just ask him, Mr. Benny, ask him, how much is two and two? Okay. Tell me, horsey, how much is two and two? <laughs> Gee, that's wonderful. He really is a smart horse. Oh, yeah. He earns about $15,000 a year. Say, that ain't hay. To him it is. <laughs> yeah, gee, he's a nice looking horse. <laughs> First time I've ever seen a horse with a mustache. You know? <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, a horse is an amazing animal. It's so huge and tremendous. And yet, the hair from its tail makes a thing as delicate as the bow for my violin. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Daddy boy, he didn't mean you personally. <laughs> hmm. Well, I got to be galloping along. <laughs> okay. It was nice seeing you again, Mr. Kitzel. Likewise, I'm sure. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hi ho, Mendel. Away. <laughs> Clever horse that was. <laughs> Who'd ever think that Mel Blank could count up to four? <laughs> well, I better be getting home. Is that you, Mr. Benny? Yes, Rochester. Any mail or phone calls? Both. We got a bill from the phone company. A bill from the phone company? Yeah, for the month of May. But this is only April. It's for 1954. <laughs> we paid that in August. That was 1952. <laughs> what happened in 1953? They took the phone out. <laughs> what? That's the year we used carrier pigeons. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I had to stop that. Everybody in Pershing Square knew my business. <laughs> Well, I think I'll go in the library and read a while. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Mr. Wilson is here to see you. Don Wilson? Where is he? Uh, asleep in the den. Asleep? Well, I'll go in and see him. <laughs> Look at him lying there. It's the only room I've ever seen with wall-to-wall -wall flab. <laughs> what he's dreaming about now. Look at that smile on his face. Ah, mm. oh, Ava. Ah, <laughs> oh, Marilyn. Oh, Lana. Oh, the chubby little rascal. <laughs> Look what he's dreaming about. You girls are so beautiful, I can't help noticing your hands. Hen? Gosh, the way you hold those lucky strikes. <laughs> commercial. Can't even dream sustaining? <laughs> For heaven's sake. L.S. MFT. L.S. MFT. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Call. Hey, listen to that. And lucky strikes are toasted, too. Mm. I've never seen anyone sleep with such a happy-go-lucky smile. <laughs> you know, Rochester dreams are funny. Did I tell you about the one I had last night? No, what was it? What a dream. You know, I dreamt I was shipwrecked on a desert island. Huh? And on this island, there was nothing but girls. Hundreds of the most beautiful girls you've ever seen. Huh? 
What a dream. They formed a circle and danced around me, made me their king. Then night came. And what happened? Suddenly a sign flashed on saying, Please stand by. Our picture has been temporarily interrupted. <laughs> I don't know. When I dream about cowboys, I always finish them. <laughs> oh, well. Want me to answer the phone, Mr. Benny? Yes, please, Rochester. Mr. Benny's rather dance. Hello, Rochester. I'd like to speak to Mr. Benny. This is Sammy the drummer. Just a second. Oh, Mr. Benny, it's for you. It's Sammy the drummer from your orchestra. Oh, thanks. Hello, Sammy. Say, Jack, would it be okay if Charlie Bagby missed the band rehearsal tomorrow? Why? What's the matter with Charlie? Well, he hasn't recovered from the accident he had on the fishing trip we took to Lake Mead last week. I didn't know he had an accident. What happened? He fell off the boat and disappeared under the water. Disappeared under the water? Yeah. We couldn't find him. We tried everything. We even baited a hook with a bottle of Old Crow, hoping he'd bite on it. <laughs> Trap, Charlie. Mm -hmm. It didn't, though. All we caught was Frank Remley. <laughs> Wait a minute. Remley didn't fall in the water, too, did he? He wasn't even on a boat. He swam in from Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he could do it. It's wonderful to see Frankie do the Australian crawl across the Mojave Desert. <laughs> Well, we'll try to rehearse without Bagby. So long, Sammy. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, Jack, I want to thank you for lending me that the other night. Oh, that's all right, Sammy. The next time, don't part it in the middle, you know. <laughs> so long. Want me to answer the door? No, I'll get it. Oh, Mr. Sandman, let me finish my dream. The one on the island, I'll keep it clean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. Come on in. How are you feeling, kid? Fine. I came over to ask you a favor. A favor? Yeah, I'm on my way to buy a new suit, and I thought maybe you'd help me pick one out. Dennis, you're a grown man. Surely you ought to know how to pick out a suit for yourself. Well, I don't. You don't? Haven't you ever bought a new suit before? Not since I worked for you. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Dennis. I pay you a good salary. What do you do with your money? Oh, I've been saving it for a rainy... What? In California, that can break you. <laughs> Look, Dennis. Last January, I had a float alone. Now, <laughs> cut that! <laughs> and stop with those jokes about rain in California. We need rain. If it didn't rain in California, what would happen to the crops? What are you growing this year? Rice. <laughs> Now, dry your feet and let me hear the song you're going to do on the show Sunday. Yes, sir. Come on, you can accompany yourself on the piano in the den. Hey, when did you get that big overstuffed sofa? That's Don Wilson. <laughs> now, go ahead and sing, will you?
Dennis! Dennis, that was very, very good. A lot you know about singing. <laughs> oh, be quiet. I thought it was good, too. Oh, Don! Don, you're awake. No, Don, I can't understand why you came over to my house to sleep. Well, Jack, that was really an accident. I came about something else. Oh, what was it? Well, I read something in one of the trade papers that might interest you. 20th Century Fox is making a big cinemascope picture, and they're looking for someone... A leading man? A leading man? No. A leading no. man? No, no, A leading Jack. man? Jack, they've a already man? got a leading, a leading man. man. Oh, oh. <laughs> they wanted me, but I didn't have a new suit. <laughs> Stop, will you? Well, here, Jack, I brought the column over with me. You can read it yourself. Let's see. Production is being held up on one of Fox's epics because the time of the picture is the early 20s and they are unable to locate a very vital prop, a 1923 Maxwell. <laughs> Mr. Zanuck will pay handsomely to anyone who can supply such a car. Oh, boy, that's the model I have, a late 1923 Maxwell. Am I in luck? What are you going to do? I'm going right over there with my car. Oh, Rochester! Yes, Mr. Benny? Get the car. We're going over to 20th Century Fox Studios. Fox Studios? With pictures I thought we were Oscarsfield. <laughs> not me they want. It's my car. Come on, let's get going. Yeah, but what about my suit? We'll drop you off on the way to the studio. Do you want to come too, Don? No, oh, no, I'll just stay here and sleep. Okay, come on, Dennis. Let's get in the car. Mm -hmm. Dennis, what kind of a suit do you want to get? Well, something with two pair of pants. I can wear them both at once like my friend does. <laughs> Your friend wears two pairs of pants at once? What's his name? Mendel. He's a horse. <laughs> oh, yes, I met him this afternoon. He counts better than I do. I know, I know. <laughs> Come on, get in the car. Okay, start the car, Rochester. Yes, sir. if this causes smog or if smog causes this. <laughs> Try it again, Rochester. Yes, sir. I wonder why it won't start. Oh, it's my fault, Mr. Billy. I forgot to put in the clutch. Hmm. <laughs> Rochester, where are you going? To get the clutch. <laughs> now, look, stop with the jokes and start the car, will you? Yes, sir. There, it's going. Now turn here, Rochester, and then go straight down to Pico. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, look at that. What? Up in the sky, that blue and gray pigeon with the thing tied to his leg. No wonder Claudette didn't come to my party last year. <laughs> she didn't get the invitation. Everybody from Pershing Square was there, but no Claudette. <laughs> Boss, the gateman let us drive it right into the studio with the car. Yeah, he said he'd phone the producer, Mr. Kearns, to tell him we were coming. That must be him over there signaling us to stop. <laughs> well, are you Mr. Kearns? Oh, yes. Are you the man with the car? That's right. Here it is. Oh, wait a minute. This won't do at all. We want a Maxwell. And on this car, it says Lincoln. He was the first owner. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't be so funny. That's a Lincoln hubcap we found, Mr. Kearns. Oh, well, then why are you using it for a door? Because it fits. It fits. <laughs> it's a 1923 Maxwell. Oh, yes, so it is. So it is. 
Oh, now, Mr. Benny, let's get down to business. Will um, $50 be all right? Only 50 Make it 75 and it's a deal. Oh, that's a lot of money for renting a car, $75 a day. A day? I thought you wanted to buy it. <laughs> yeah, I think 50 is a fair price. Oh, good. Now, I'd like to hear how the motor sounds. Rochester, start the car again, will you? Yes, sir. <laughs> That's, that's good. By the way, Mr. Kearns, what are you going to use my car for? Well, when the picture opens, we see a shot of this car driving down the street and Marilyn Monroe is sitting in it. Marilyn Monroe? <laughs> Roger, the radiator blew its cap. <laughs> see if you can fix it. Well, the motor sounds okay. You can turn it off. Now, uh, Mr. Benny, if you'll just sign this paper, we'll consummate the deal. Okay, but what else are you going to do with my car in the picture? Well, in the final scene, we're going to run it off a 1,000-foot cliff. My car? You're going to run my car off a cliff? Yes. You mean it hasn't already been done? <laughs> Certainly not. And I can't agree to a deal like that. This car's been with me so long, it's almost part of me. Gee, if this car were run off a cliff, it would be like, well, like, like me being pushed off a cliff. That's a deal you should discuss with Warner Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> well, your deal might not be too bad. I think that I might consider... Jack! 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 Oh, well, gosh, I've looked all over for you. Why, Don? Claudette Colbert got your invitation. She'll be at your party Saturday. <laughs> well, what do you know? The pigeon finally made it. If he gets back in time, we'll have squab. <laughs> Jack will be back in just a minute, but right now, here's a suggestion for you. Light up the lucky. It's light up time. Be happy, go lucky. It's light up time for the taste that you like. Light up the lucky strike. Relax. It's light up time. That's a grand idea for a pleasant Sunday evening at home. Or any time at all when you want to enjoy a really great cigarette. Just lean back and light up a Lucky. Because every Lucky you light is sure to give you better taste. And here's why. First, Luckies are made of fine tobacco. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Light, mild, naturally good-tasting tobacco. And then that tobacco is toasted. It's toasted is the famous Lucky Strike process that tones up Lucky's fine tobacco brings it to its peak of flavor, makes it taste even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. So right now, friends, or any time at all when it's light-up time for you, make it a Lucky, the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Light up a Lucky. It's light-up time. Be happy, go Lucky. It's light-up time for the taste that you like. Light up a Lucky Strike. Right now. Light up a Lucky. It's light up time. Hold still, Mr. Benny. Look, I, but I... Please, I want Mr. To... Benny, don't talk till I'm finished taking your temperature and your pulse. Now, look, Jack, you better not move or you'll disturb the splints. How was I to know when the car went over the cliff I'd have to be driving it? <laughs> Some people won't do for money. I think that's the silliest thing I... Hello? Oh, now, wait a minute. Well, okay, I'll be there. Who was that, Jack? Fox Studios. Tomorrow I do retakes. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsburg, George Balzer, 
John Tackerberry, Al Gordon, Hal Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Filter smokers, here's the true tobacco taste you've been looking for. Filter tip Tariton gives you all the full, rich flavor of Tariton's famous quality tobacco. And real filtration, too. Filter tip Tariton incorporates activated charcoal, renowned for its unusual powers of selective filtration and used far and wide to purify the air we breathe, the water and beverages we drink. Look for the red, white, and blue stripes on the package. They identify Filter Tip Tariton, the best in filtered smoking. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes.